City on an overcast, cool afternoon where the Hawkeyes will take on the Badgers of Wisconsin right here on Sports Vision. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Healy. With me is former Iowa All-American Keith Chappelle. It's the Hawkeyes and the Badgers this afternoon. Coming into this game, the Hawks 4-0, ranked 10th nationally. The Badgers 1-4, and, and the surprise team of the Big Ten. The surprise because they are 1-4, Keith. A lot of folks thought they'd be a much better ball club. Well, they did. Last year was a rebuilding year for them, and they hope to do a lot better than they have this year. They've had some key injuries to some top players, and that's really set them back. But they're looking to do well today. The Hawkeyes have had a lot of luck over uh, the last few years, the last 10 years, as a matter of fact, and Hayden Fry has not lost to them ever. Well, that's a, a good point for Hayden. He's never lost to a Wisconsin team, and that's a tradition he keeps to carry on today. Right, the Hawkeyes' situation at quarterback is a big question mark right now. Mark Velasic was out and missed the Michigan State game last week with a shoulder injury, and in his place, Tom Poholsky started, who was the fourth stringer a few weeks ago. Today, it's still up in the air as they will be calling the signals for the Hawks. It really is, but whoever it is, uh, we're sure that we'll get a top performer. This has become Iowa's trademark this year, is being able to pull people out of the hat who, in surprise starts, have done very well. Poholsky was named Player of the Week last week in the Midwest, and he's done well. Tom Poholsky uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, only a sophomore for the Hawkeyes. On the other side of the field, you have a new quarterback starting for Wisconsin. Bud Keys will get the call. He had been the backup to Mike Howard. Howard, quite frankly, hadn't played that well, according to Jim Hillis, the first three or four games. Howard came in to the Michigan game late, scored a couple of touchdowns, a couple of nice drives, so he's going to get a shot at the Hawks. Well, what they're going to look to do is extend on last week. Uh, Michigan's game was a blowout, but... Keys did come in and spark the team, and they're hoping that spark will carry through in this game. This is the type of thing that the, the Wisconsin Badgers need, is some type of spark plug to get them on the roll. There is no love lost either between the Hawks and the Badgers. Some of the Badgers heading into this game saying they are going to get their licks in. So uh, I remember a game two years ago when Ronnie Harmon went down with a broken leg. Chuck Long had an uh, injured knee. Uh, it's a very physical game. It is, and this is what has become uh, symbolic of the rivalry between the Badgers and the Hawkeyes. There's a lot of hard hitting, a lot of talking going on amongst both sides, and I think we're ahead looking for a good football game. Wisconsin is a 23-point underdog, but uh, historically this game has been closer. Can they play with Iowa? I think they can. I think they get the emotion running. Uh, the team gets fired up. They're not very scared walking into this uh, stadium, so I'm looking for a good game. In just a few moments, we'll have the opening kickoff. It's the Hawkeyes and the Badgers of Wisconsin. You're seeing it right here on Sports Vision. <laughs> Welcome It is the site for today's Big Ten matchup between the Badgers of Wisconsin and the Iowa Hawkeyes right here on Sports Vision. I'm Bob Healy. With me is Keith Chappelle for today's ball game. An overcast, cloudy day for today's game. Temperature about 55 degrees, and the wind could be a factor. Winds 15 to 20 miles an hour, and there is a chance of rain this afternoon. So the sun looks like it is going to stay behind the clouds. Uh, this series has been all one-sided the last 10 years. The Badgers are looking to snap a nine-game winless streak uh, for them here at Kinnick Stadium. Four losses. Uh, the last time the Badgers won, 1976. 10-10 uh, they tied, though, back in 1984. It is always a tough, hard-nosed, hitting football game. Both teams have some injuries heading into this ball game. For Wisconsin, their star, Larry Emery, is out as well as Craig Raddatz. And the Hawks have some problems as well, Keith. They do. The Hawkeyes, uh, we watch pregame warm-up, and Velasic didn't even throw the football, so we're looking to see who's going to be the starting quarterback. Our best guess is it'll be Poholsky, who had a super game last week for the Hawkeyes. Dave Hudson is another injured Hawk that... In all probability, we'll see no action today, but their replacements have done very well. We talked about uh, Keaton Smiley, uh, the cornerback who had a super game last week against Michigan State, entering himself in tackling Lorenzo White. He's probable for this game. So Hayden Fry, that man in there, has got a lot of question marks again to feel, but that's been the, the, the tradition all season this year. All right, officials for today's game, Otto Courts is the rap. The umpire is Dan Davey. Wayne Neese is the head linesman. Ron Winter is our line judge. The field judge is Denny Friend. Bob Colburn is the side judge and the back judge, Tom Herbert. George Murphy will kick off for the Hawkeyes, number six, and we are underway. Dan Kissling and Nate Odoms are deep. It's Odoms at the 20, across the 25, still on his feet, trying to get outside, and finally written out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 
Nate Odom, one of the leading kickoff returners in the Big Ten, finally knocked out of bounds by J.J. Puck. Here's that Wisconsin offense. Bud Keys is getting his first start this year. Mike Howard has been benched. Armantrout will see a lot of the ball. Marvin Hartley is the fullback, a bruising runner. The receivers, Tompkins, Bester, and Anderson. It's first and 10 from the 30-yard line for Wisconsin. And the pitch goes right, weaving and bobbing his way up the middle. Joe Armantrout stopped by John Reeves. That line for the Badgers, Paul Grubner. One tackle, Todd Nelson, Rodney Loslow. Also, Glenn Derby. He's the big man on the line, 6'7", 285. Keith Peterson lines up next to him. A gain of two, it'll be second down and eight from the 33. The Badgers line up in the eye. Armantrout in the backfield along with Hartley. And a short pass is complete to Hartley. Hartley still on his feet, almost to midfield, out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So the Badgers go to the air on second down and pick up the first down. The Hawks defense, uh, one of the best in the country, led by Joe Mott, had an outstanding game last week against Michigan State. Of course, Jeff Dross, you can't say enough about the nose guard, Dave Haight. John Breeze lines up at right tackle, and Bruce Gear, a Madison, Wisconsin native, lines up on the right side. A first down, it's first and 10 at the 46. Another long count by the Badgers. Joe Armantrout stacked up at the 48-yard line. That Iowa defense gang tackling, something they've become known for across the Big Ten. George Davis made this stop. He's one of the Hawks' outstanding linebackers along with Dan Worth. Ken Sims, who had that immaculate interception to save the ball game last week against Michigan State is the left corner. Kerry Burt, Kyle Crow, and Keaton Smiley, the rest of that backfield. Sims, uh, the lone returner coming back. Second down and nine. Lone back now for the Badgers. Little swing pass goes to Hartley, and he is cut down by Anthony Wright. Anthony Wright getting the start for an injured Keaton Smiley, and great open field tackle. This is, this is, uh, we talked about Anthony Wright subbing in for Keaton Smiley, and the, the Badgers are going to go right at him. This is just a swing pass. He does a good job of coming up and stopping this guy, who Hartley's all up 230 pounds. That's a good tackle. The Badgers need six for the first down. The ball marked at the 50-yard line. Reginald Tompkins in motion. And Keyes throws the interception right into the hands of Jeff Gross. Gross motoring down to the nine-yard line. Oh, my, Gross. What a gift. <laughs> and that could be the inexperience of a younger quarterback. This is every lineman's dream. The, the pressure is being put on by Bob there. Every does does a good job, Keyes does a good job of getting off, but it's right into the hands of Dross, and there you see him rambling downfield, showing great speed here, and out running. This is the race of a century there. Jeff Dross. Dross, 6'5", 285. Uh, he runs the 40, and, well, we won't talk about it, but he made it down to the 10-yard line. The Hawks with a chance to get on the board quick. The quarterback is Tom Paholski, number 14. Filling in for the injured Mark Vlasic. On first down, the Hawks go to Rick Bayless. Bayless down to the five. They talk about that interception return by Dross. That's the longest uh, any Hawkeye has returned an interception this year. And to come from a defensive line in the size of Dross, that's going to be a pretty big bragging right for him around campus. Rick Bayless seeing a lot of action this year because of an injury to Ronnie Harmon. Actually, his brother, Kevin. Clark lines up tight on the left side. Again, the call is to Bayless. He's in for the score. After an interception by Jeff Dross, the Hawks take two plays to get on the board. 6-0 Iowa. 
this is the one thing the Badgers can ill afford is to, to let this Hawkeye offense score as quick as they have because this game can get out of hand real quickly with returns like that. Rob Howland with the point after. He had been perfect till last week, did miss two, was going for the record of 41 in a row at Iowa and missed. He gets this one though and it is Iowa seven, Wisconsin nothing. We'll be back on Sports Vision back to Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes, in case you just joined us, are on the board. 7-0 after an interception by Jeff Dross, one of the linemen. A bad pass by Bud Keys. The Hawks take it two plays later into the end zone. Dross interception, 20-yard return after the interception. The Hawkeyes take advantage of the Wisconsin air. And now George Murphy will put it back in play. The Badgers will get a second shot. This is something Murphy was successful with against Michigan State, the squib kick. Dan Kissling picked it up at about the 20. J.J. Puck stopped him. That last scoring drive, just two plays. Bam, bam, the Hawkeyes take it in. 10 yards, 39 seconds. Rick Bayless carried it into the end zone. The Hawks lead 7-0. The ball at the 38-yard line of the Badgers. Again, it is Artley and Armitrout in the backfield. They line up in the eye. And the Hawkeyes stack it up at the line of scrimmage. Davis in on it, along with Dave Haight. Marvin Artley, a sophomore from Chicago with the carry. So far this year, there you see the stats, 41 rushes, 181 yards, and one TD. Very tough, punishing runner. His nickname is the L Train. Second down and eight. Armin Trout, straight up the middle, across the 45 to the 46-yard line. That'll bring up third down and about four. But Joe Armentrout is going to be called on to carry a lot of the load now with Larry Emery out. The, the Badgers took the initial play uh, series of downs and were mixing the plays up pretty well. The thing they've got to be very wary of against these Hawkeyes is any errant pass is going to cost you. Michigan State found that out last week, and the, the Badgers are finding it out pretty early. They can't afford that. Third down and two. Keys will go to the air. He's got time. And incomplete. At the 50-yard line, Joe Armantrout coming out of the backfield, the intended receiver, and the Badgers will have to give it up again. Armantrout was attempting to run just a little flare pass there right over the middle. Was open, but the, the pass was just out of the reach of Armantrout. Jim Hillis in his first year as the head coach of the Badgers, taking over for the late Denny McLean, who passed away last year of a heart attack suddenly. C.B. Marciano is back at the 10-yard line. Scott Sapecki, the puncher, one of the best in the country, gets off a high arching kick here taken by Kyle Crow at the 27-yard line where the Hawks will take over with the 7-0 lead. Heading into this ball game, Iowa ranked 10th nationally, number one in the country in offense. And that defense also right near the top as well. They stopped the Badgers twice. That first series, the Hawkeyes hardly even broke a sweat before they scored. First and 10 from the 28. Boholski goes to the air and across the middle. Mike Flagg is hit hard as he crosses the 50 down to the 48, but held on to the football. The senior from Cedar Falls, Iowa, and Boholski hits his first pass. Pete Nauka made this hit. This is a professional type pass that Flagg caught. Paholski lining up sent three receivers into the zone. Flagg is running straight down the center of the field. Paholski lifts the ball up. But Flagg is solidly hit here and does a great job of hanging on to the football. I tell you what, pro scouts look a lot at that and Flagg's doing well for himself this year. Kevin Harmon is in the game now. Richard Bass to carry that time goes nowhere. Bass had a good ball game last week, though, against Michigan State. Bass 
pass in his first start last week. Picked up 48 yards. Also scored a very important touchdown for the Hawkeyes. Number 84 is Marv Cook. The Hawkeyes will shuttle in their place with the tight ends. Flag, Cook, and Craig Clark. A loss of five that time. It is second down and 15. Robert Smith is in. Wide left at the bottom of your screen. And a whistle before the play is off. Could have been a little motion in that Iowa backfield. Still was time on the 25-second clock. An illegal procedure against the Hawkeyes. That'll push them back five more yards. It'll be second down and 20. The Badgers have a great lift going into this game in that their captain, Radix, is back able to play. He really is the emotional leader for this defense. And they were certainly hurting without him, and the fact that he can come in and play this game is really going to help solidify this defense for the Badgers. Second down in a bunch. Again, Robert Smith lines up wide left at the bottom of the screen. The Hawks line up in the eye, and they'll stay on the ground. Kevin Harmon. Harmon is stopped. 42 yard line. Harmon has not seen that much action in the last few weeks. Played sparingly last week, coming off a leg injury that has slowed him down, pulled hamstring. Well, those type of injuries are rough to come from. The thing that made this play successful for the Badgers with the pursuit. Harmon initially taking this ball is met by Keith Browning, the free safety. Here you see him just fly into the screen. Although he didn't make the tackle, he held Harmon up long enough to allow the pursuit for the Badgers to come in and collapse on him. Pickup of one, it's third down and 19. Smith lines up in the slot. Single back for the Hawks is Richard Bass. And Paholski on the screen gets it off the pass. He's got room across the 50 and ridden down at midfield. So the Hawkeyes try the short screen on third down. Craig Raditz, number 53, who had missed the last couple of weeks, one of the defensive captains for the Badgers, has a pinched nerve in his neck, but is playing today. He made the stop, and the Hawkeyes will have to give it up. Gary Castrobala angling for the right corner, and it hits out of bounds at the 17-yard line. So good, good boost kick by Castrobala. Sports Vision is proud to bring you exclusive coverage of Hawkeye football all season long. Tune in every Tuesday night as Sports Vision follows the Hawks in their defense of the Big Ten Championship. Join Keith Chappelle and myself Tuesday nights throughout the fall. Next up for the Hawkeyes, the University of Michigan, Ole Shen Beckler. So don't miss it right here on Sports Vision. We've got Iowa's winners on cable. 8.08 left to play in the first quarter. The Hawks with a 7-0 lead. And the Badgers take over first and 10 at the 17-yard line. Joe Armantrout, number 23, takes it straight up the middle. A gain of one, maybe two. One of the captains on this ball club. Armantrout, a senior from Elgin, Illinois. Also a threat coming out of that backfield, catching a pass. He had five last week against Michigan. Armantrout is a runner as much along the same lines as the Hawkeyes' Rick Bayless. He's a straight-ahead runner. He reads blocks well, and once he gets down, he'll just lower the shoulder and uh, deliver a blow himself. So the Badgers are counting on him for a lot this game. Second down and four. Hartley runs into a wall of black and gold at the 23-yard line. George Davis leading the charge. And it will be third down and four for Jim Hillis and company. Not by That's not by Brad Frost. One of, down, one of the keys three. last week that allowed Michigan State was their ability to convert on these third down situations. I think the Hawkeyes are going to do a better job this game uh, sealing that up. So far... The Badgers are 0-2 on third down conversions. Again, Keys will go to the air across the middle and almost picked off by Kerry Burt. Intended receiver was the tight end, Brian Anderson, and he is down now on the field, appears to be injured. Anderson, a junior from Madison, Wisconsin. Anderson split himself here on, on the reception. As you see Key and Kerry Burt go for the ball, you see his legs just go right in the middle. And that's a very, very dangerous situation, DB. And you saw him 
reaching for his, his back leg there. I think it might have been in the area where he may have a high hamstring pull there. We're hoping not, but they're attaining to him now. There we see Keaton Smiley on the sidelines. He injured last week in a collision with Lorenzo White that sent both of them out of the game, being replaced by Anthony Wright, a sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. And the Badgers might do well to work on Wright this game and see uh, what the sophomores got. Appears to be his right knee. Jim Hillis and his coaches looking on from the sidelines. Anderson's backup is Grant Kennedy, a senior from Madison, Wisconsin. A lot of these players right around the Wisconsin area. One Hawkeye player is from Wisconsin, Bruce Gear, one of their defensive ends. He was recruited heavily by Wisconsin. In fact, he was a next door neighbor of Denny McLean when he was growing up, but decided to come to Iowa instead. Anderson is up now, being helped off the field. Here's to be a right knee, possibly. And we're hoping it's not serious for Anderson. They're going to pack that in ice as quickly as possible to prevent the swelling and then get him a chance to see it. I don't think we'll see him the rest of this game. Hopefully he'll be back for the Badgers, though. The punter is Scott Sabicki from St. Louis. They call him the free spirit of St. Louis, one of the top punters in the country, ranked third nationally, averaging almost 46 yards a punt. A high snap, but he gets an end-over-end -end kick. Peter Marciano will let it bounce. It takes a Wisconsin bounce across the 40, and they're down it at the 39-yard line, where the Hawks will take over first and 10 with 6.36 left to play in the first quarter. Iowa leads 7-0 over the Badgers of Wisconsin. One of the key things last week that Paholski did was uh, develop long, sustaining drives. We've got 6.36 here in the first, first quarter, and he really hasn't had an opportunity to get himself on track here other than the quick scoring drive. So I look for him to go with some of their medium-range passing and allow some of these running backs an opportunity to, to run behind the huge offensive line. 37-yard punt by Sopecki gives the Hawks the ball at the 39-yard line. Kevin Harmon on the pitch right, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. That Hawk offensive line has really done a job this year. Dave Croston, Sidlinger, Bob Kratz, Herb Wester. In fact, some of the pro scouts that are coming in are just noticing some of the players. They all know who number 61 is, Dave Croston, but some of them are asking Hayden Fowler, well, who's that big number 74? Chris Gamble, how big is he? Well, he's 6'7", 285. Uh, where's he been? Well, it's his first year starting. So a lot of these players continually getting better and better as they play because this is the first time they've been full-time starters. That offensive line has been able to give the Hawkeyes plenty of room to throw these first four ball games. Penalty that time, though, before the play got started. I think we're going to see a little movement on the Hawkeyes' part. And the second penalty against the Hawkeyes today, the first one also an illegal procedure call, could have been Richard Bass in motion. That'll move the Hawks back five more. Iowa had some penalties last week against Michigan State that seemed to be a bother for them, caused them some problems as well. They really did, and they've got to, as the season progresses, eliminate a lot of these penalties because they're taking themselves out of the, the, the keys to their offense. When you line up second and 15, uh, your play selection becomes very limited at that point. Bass and Harmon line up in the eye. Robert Smith in the slot left. And it is Bass straight up the middle, bowling his way across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Richard Bass, sophomore from Omaha, just 5'9", 210. Hayden Fry calls him a rolling ball of knives when he runs. If you watch that, the touchdown run he made last week against Michigan State, you can see why. He keeps low to the ground, and the first uh, initial hit, he always seems to spin off. Does a great job of running low to the ground and keeping his knees high. Third down and seven. Mark Missouri in motion lines up in the slot. Maholski looking across the middle. He's got time. He's looking for Jim Morrow. Morrow down to the 20-yard line. Nate Odoms with the coverage. Incomplete. The Hawkeyes will have to give it up. 447 left the fight. Iowa 7, Wisconsin nothing. Jim Morrow, number 47, one of those fabulous walk-ons. A great story this year at Iowa, the walk-ons really contributing 
with some injuries, some academic problems on this Iowa team. Costa ball at the cut. Nate Odoms calls for the third catch. It bounces into the end zone where the Badgers will take over 7-0. 3-40 left to play in the first quarter. Bob Healy along with Keith Chappelle. You're watching Hawkeye football on Sports Vision. by Gary Costabala pushes the Badgers back at the 20 yard line Costabala put it into the end zone those first and 10 and keys goes to the air across the middle and complete to Reginald Tompkins Tompkins with the first down at the 35 yard line George Davis and Ken Sims came up to make the stop Tompkins is a senior out in Decatur Georgia and they realized last week that the, the Spartans had success with finding the Hawkeye zone. Thompson does a good job there of sitting down and allowing Keys a steady target to hit. Sims came up and made the tackle, but these are the type of plays that have seemed to work well against the Hawkeyes all year long, but unless the team can do a good job of mixing them up, they catch on as the, 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 the game progresses. Keys getting his first start for the Badgers this year, started four games last year. He looks to the air, flushed out of the pocket. Keys will run with it, and caught from behind by Joe Mott. Keys with a pickup of seven, possibly eight yards, close to a first down. Keys may be a little better runner than Howard was, and this is going to add a certain dimension after being flushed out, as you mentioned there. Not finding anyone open, he just tucks the ball away and runs and picks up an actual first down for the Hawkeyes, finally being stopped there by number 97 for the Hawkeyes, Joe Mott. And they say he did get enough for the first down, so it's first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Artley finds a hole, breaks it for 12 yards down to the 43-yard line. Rick Schmidt finally came up from that backfield to make the stop along with Kyle Crow. But Marvin Artley, the sophomore from Chicago, broke one in a big hole on the left side. Kind of gave you an indication there why they call him the L train. When you get a guy moving forward that that's, that's that big, he makes an awful difficult target to tackle. Out ahead of steam that time as he took it down to the 43-yard line. The Badgers with their first drive of the ball game. They've been stopped a couple times already by this Iowa defense that is allowing less than one yard per rush this season. Pitch right to Armitrop. Armitrop jumps over one man. Kyle Crow found him. Brought him down at the 32-yard line. Close to a first down again. Go. Armitron is another one of those runners that follows his blocks well. See him as he just hesitates and lets the wall form, finds the hole and shoots right through. we got a penalty on the play that's going to bring it back. But Armitron showing there why they felt no qualms at all about moving him from his fullback spot to tailback in place of Henry. We've got a clipping on the badges that's going to nullify the whole situation. But as we mentioned before, he's a great receiver catching the ball in the flat out of the backfield, so he poses a lot of threats for opposing teams. They'll mark up five, make it ten against the Badgers. Keys so far, 205 for 33 yards. A hold against Wisconsin. That's got to hurt. They had some momentum going, driving for the first time, and now it is first and 20. A lot of teams are, are choosing to go against these Hawkeyes in sprint-out type uh, pass plays. That's in an effort to avoid that Hawkeye middle with Drost and Breeze up the middle. They feel they can sprint away from the pressure and find receivers downfield. Brad Kennedy in motion. Now he lines up on the left side. Keys across the middle, complete. Grant Kennedy, the man in motion, down to the 36-yard line. Kyle Crow again with the stop. Grant Kennedy, a senior from Madison, five catches for 51 yards heading into this game, and just wide open across the middle. The Hawkeyes are doing a lot of stunning in the secondary, and Keys is doing a good job of finding the open man. Brad Kennedy there caught that ball and did a good job of turning it up. But if you watch them, they're stunning with their, their defensive ends and the cornerbacks. So the Badgers picked up 16 of that 20 they needed for the first down. This time on the drop. Down to the 32, close to the first down. 
Depends on where they mark it. Joe Mott again came up to make the stop, one of the defensive ends for the Hawkeyes. Had a great ball game last week against Michigan State. Mott with six tackles, two of them for losses against the Spartans. Going to bring up a third down and short. I think uh, here's the type of plays where you do well to have a guy like Adderley. Let's see if they give him the ball. Hawkeyes up tight for this one, third and one. The ball at the 33. The give is to the first man through, Hartley, and he has the first down. But there is a flag down in the Wisconsin backfield. Could have been some motion. Dan Worth talking it over with one of the officials. He signals first down, but there is a flag down. And it appears this is against Iowa. This is what we talked about going into the game, that rivalry there. The referee caught a little pushing and shoving on top of the pile, and they're going to eliminate that early by penalizing these Hawkeyes. Uh, the Wisconsin-Iowa tradition has, has gone out a lot of uh, name-calling back and forth, a lot of attempts to cheap shot, and both Hayden Fry and uh, the Wisconsin Badger coach don't want any of that to get going, so this is a good call by the referee. Heading into this game, a lot of talk going on by Wisconsin players uh, talking about getting their licks in against Iowa. Of course, coming into this game, they're one and four with really nothing to lose, a chance to knock off a top 10 team in Iowa. And of course, no love lost at all between these two teams. Tompkins in motion, first and 10, Parker at the 16. The short pass is complete at the 12 yard line. Ken Sims made the stop. Bill Williams, Jr. was the receiver. This is just a short sprint out pay, play. Keys does a good job of keeping the ball low and away. The only person that has an opportunity to catch that is Williams, and he catches it right in front of Sims. Remember, going into this game, the Hawkeyes have not allowed a TD rushing by anyone this season. Hartley and Armitrout in the eye, second and five. Armitrout saw an opening on the right side, but Mike Burke caught it from behind and may have saved a touchdown that time because there was a big hole into that end zone. And Armitrout was going to find it. You know, it, it's interesting to watch the Hawkeyes. I don't think uh, any runners, the only success that I've ever seen a running back have against the Hawkeyes this year is when they're going north and south. The runners that have more moves and tend to shift and sway laterally don't do as well against this Hawkeye pursuit because they pursue so fast. But north and south runners, people without as many moves who just keep the ball fluid, seem to do pretty well. Timeout call by Wisconsin. 34 seconds left in the first quarter. Iowa leads 7-0. It'll be third down and four, so the Badgers want to talk it over. Bud Keys goes over to the sideline to talk to Jim Hillis and his coaching staff. What do you run on third and four against the Hawkeyes when they've been so tough against the run? Well, with the type of team that the Badgers have, I don't think they have the rushers who are capable of doing it. I, I think what you're going to have to do is give Keys a situation where he has an option, maybe a, a sprint out pass where if the, the Hawkeyes play soft, he can maybe throw a pass underneath it. If not, he can possibly run it in himself. But uh, not a running play, not against this rushing defense. They're not allowed a, a scoring touchdown. They've only allowed an average of 27 yards a game the first four games. So that's what I look to see him do. Keys on this start today with an impressive performance over Michigan. Came in the second half and rallied Wisconsin for two late touchdowns with 16 of 19 for 198 yards and two touchdowns. So he got the start today instead of Mike Howard, who started the first four games. The Badgers won and four heading into this ball game. Jim Miller said that Mike Howard had not really done the job, and so Keyes is getting his shot, trying to make the most of it. He needs three here for the first down, nine for the score. Long back for the Badgers is Joe Armentrout. Two receivers wide left. He's looking into the end zone, incomplete at the five-yard line. Armantrout, the intended receiver out of the backfield. The pass was not catchable, thrown at his feet, and it will be fourth and three. Armantrout was in a foot race there with George Davis, and had the ball been thrown properly, he did have an opportunity to catch that, but 
Keyes himself was in a difficult situation because he was rolling to the left side, attempting to throw, and to straighten up and get a pass there is awful difficult to play. Wasn't even close to being caught and just allowed a scoring opportunity for the Badgers. Todd Gregory, number five, and he'll attempt a 20-yarder. Four of eight this year. This one is up and good. So with 26 seconds left in the quarter, the Badgers are on the board. Iowa 7, Wisconsin 3. And the Hawkeyes have to feel good about stopping in that close, but still, it gives Wisconsin a little momentum here. The game not a runaway. And without that first early turnover, this could be a 3-0 game. Oh, easily. And there, there have been very few runaway games with the Badgers here, although they come into this game 23-point underdogs. They've always played the Hawkeyes tough. Uh, I think the Iowa defense did a good job of nullifying a scoring opportunity in forms of a touchdown on that play. But the Wisconsin team ran the ball pretty well. They mixed their plays up. Uh, they got some good performances out of Armand Trotter and some key passes by Key. So that was a good drive for them. Some key passes by Keys. Key passes by Keys. This is when you're going coming off a game like they had against Michigan, they needed to find a spark plug. And in the second half, Keys provided that. And they really used that as their, their fundamental point for building onto this game. Last week, the Badgers lost to Michigan 34-17. to The Hawkeyes coming off a big win at East Lansing over Michigan State. 24-21, to the final score on that one. And there was some concern about a letdown playing a 1-4 Wisconsin team with the Hawkeyes playing nationally ranked Michigan next week. I don't think we'll see that in the Hawkeye teams. They know very well that you got to come into this game and, and take each game one at a time. It's a long season, and if they do, the Badgers, as we've talked about before the season, have had some upsets uh, with some, with some top-ranked teams, and the Hawkeyes don't want to fall as one of them. Gregory puts it in play, another squib kick taken by Robert Smith. Smith finds an opening. Robert Smith cuts back, still on his feet, across the 40. And down to the 48 yard line. Brilliant open field running by the senior from Dallas, Texas. Nate Open, Odoms, their speedster from Columbus, made the stop, or Robert Smith might have been gone. You see in here one of the big reasons why these teams squib kick. When you got Harmon and Smith back there, you got two potential game breakers. Smith saw the hole immediately, and he couldn't get to it fast enough. You see a good move here, not only in eluding the kicker, but in keeping his balance as well. And Odom does a good job of catching him in the, uh, on an open field tackle. Oh, he'd be gone. You ever notice those kickers don't like to give up the body? You see that swipe Gregory <laughs> took at him? One arm and he was gone. So the Hawks have it first and 10 at the 48. Rick Bayless gets the call. And he crosses the 50 into Badger territory down to the 48-yard line. Rick Bayless, another one of those walk-ons from Hugo, Minnesota. Mike Reed came up to make the stop for the Badgers. Reed, what a great ball game he had last week against Michigan. 22 tackles, 15 solo tackles. That's the end of our first quarter. It is Iowa 7, Wisconsin 3. We'll be back with the second quarter after this on Sports Beat. Welcome back to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City on an overcast Saturday afternoon. The Hawkeyes lead the Badgers of Wisconsin 7-3. Hayden Fry in his eighth year as a head coach. There had been some talk, uh, an article in a Dallas newspaper in the past day or so that Hayden that Fred Akers was out and Hayden Fry was in. Hayden Fry very vociferous in denying that charge, saying he has a home here at Iowa and he is staying. The whole state of Iowa up in arms for about half a day over that rumor. Second down and four from the 46. And it's Bayless. Bayless down to the 46-yard line. Craig Raditz. Number 53 with the stop. Raditz, one of the captains for the Badgers. Raditz and Reed as a, a combination provide the Badgers with a great inside linebacking core. You talked about Reed having a super game against Michigan last week with 22 tackles. Well, Raditz came into the season as everybody's picked to making all Big Ten, so the two of them together really pose a, a threat for opposing offenses. Third down and three. Bass is the lone back. And he gets the draw. Bass does not get the first down. Stopped at the 45-yard line. This Wisconsin defense up for this game. Bill Williams coming up to make the stop. There's a lot of pride on this Badger team, and here you see them doing a great job of pursuing Bass. 
three or four Badgers initially making contact, and they're nullifying this play before it even gets started. That's a great series of downs for the Badgers in keeping the Hawkeyes and forcing them to have to turn the ball over. And it looks like the Hawks may go for it on fourth and two. Wisconsin trying to shuffle in the defense again. They thought Iowa was going to punt. Still, there was a man back deep for Wisconsin at the 12-yard line. And now a whistle. I think they're calling the Hawkeyes for, uh, I believe there's still six seconds on the 25-second clock. I think the officials are stopping play so the Wisconsin players can get off the field. Is that kosher? Timeout taken by Wisconsin. So what happened was Wisconsin saw that Iowa was not going to punt, were going to go for it. They had two teams on the field, to decided to use one of their timeouts. So that could have given the Hawks the first down right there, five yard penalty. Oh, easily, because the Badgers didn't know. They had two different teams on the field, half of them had turned off, and as their defensive unit got back on the field, they still had a punt return man, Odom's back uh, at about the Badger 10 yard line. So. This is a good move, nullifying that and putting them into a situation where if they're going to go for it, he's going to make them earn it. Hayden Fry became the all-time winningest coach in Iowa history this year, passing force at Bashevsky, and they come out in droves, and they love to wear their black and gold here at Kinnick Stadium. Very difficult place for teams to come and play because of uh, the hometown support. Oh, it's uh, the home field advantage here. They talked about how much was it worth? A lot, you hear a lot of different coaches say, well, uh, in a good place like Ann Arbor or Columbus or Iowa City, it's worth at least seven points. And the Hawkeyes have found that true, having a super home record and really uh, letting the, the crowd do a good part in motivating the players and and the coaches out there. Pastor Bauer now is in. The Hawks will give it up. Pastor Bauer with a little pooch kick, aiming for the right sideline. And it hits at the 12 yard line. So a nice punt by Gary Gastrobala angling for that right sideline. There you see the official marking it at the 12 yard line. Gastrobala, very talented athlete, also on the track team here at Iowa. A discus thrower, one of the best in the Big Ten, as a matter of fact. And he pushes the Badgers back to the 12 yard line. Will have to take over first and 10. And now that Iowa defense will go to work once again. The last series of plays, the Badgers moved the ball pretty well against the Hawkeyes. They mixed their plays up uh, using sprint out passes and came up with three points for us. So that was a good confidence builder for them. Let's see if they can continue it. That last punt, 37 yards, and more importantly, no return. On the drought, bobbing and weaving, trying to read the blocks, and everything just closed up on it, not the 10 yard line. Jeff Drost. One of the first people to get to him. Although Keyes is a junior, he hadn't had a, an extensive amount of playing time, and I think what the Hawkeyes are doing now is attempting to give him defensively a lot of different looks to think about in an effort to confuse him. You saw Anthony Wright, cornerback, coming all the way up on the line of scrimmage and then backing off, hopefully confusing him and showed, forcing him to go into a wrong read. A loss of one on that last play. Keyes was in trouble, had to dump it off. Almost to safety. Joe Mott read it perfectly. Keyes fake to his left, rolled right, and there was pick number 97. Joe Mott, how'd he do? And all Keyes could do was dump it off. That'll bring up third and 11. But Joe Mott's coming off a super game last week against Michigan State, and Keyes did a good job of just getting that ball out of the way and avoiding a safety because Mott had him Dead to rights there in the Hawkeye end zone. Third and 11. Across the middle of the armor drop. Down to the 18 and not enough for the first down. The Badgers will have to give it up. Dwight Sistrunk get on the hit along with George Davis. And again, that Iowa defense uh, holding tough. But what a game they had last week against the Heisman Trophy candidate, Lorenzo White. They held White to just 41 yards on 19 carries. Aiden Price says they could be one of the best ever here at Iowa, and that's saying a lot. And looks like Iowa's going to go for the block. Now Crow backs off. Sapecki, one of the best punters in the country, and he booms one. To Peter Marciano at the 33, and Marciano is smothered at the 36-yard line. 
no return by Marciano. Dan Kissling, the first player to get to him. Each week, Sports Vision covers football like no other station. Aiden Fry every Wednesday, Fred Akers and Jackie Shadow on Thursdays, Lou Holtz on Fridays, and Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys on Saturday. Also, don't miss the Doug Buffone Rich King football show from Mike Dicka's restaurant. That's every Friday night. So for the most comprehensive football coverage in the Midwest, watch Sports Vision. 12.03 left in the second quarter. Iowa leads Wisconsin 7-3. The Hawkeyes are 23-point favorite heading into this game, but so far Wisconsin has been very, very tough, not playing like a 1-4 team. Rich Graff coming up to make the stop on Rick Bayless. You talk about the Hawkeye offense. They, got, they use a lot of different players from a lot of different formations. We talked about how they use... David Hudson when he was around there and using a one set formation. Well, they're continuing that with with Richard Bass and attempting to show the Badgers many different formations and hopefully finding some openings. Bass getting his second start after the injury to David Hudson. Hudson with a quadricep injury still out. That time Paholsky went back, tried to hide it, and he got caught. Dick Teal, a senior from Ohio, Maumee, Ohio. Got in and a loss of about seven. Now this is supposed to be a bootleg fake, but the only person that was fake was Paholsky when he turns around and finds Off Dick, play, Dick Teets right in his face. That's a big we'll loss for the Hawkeyes and puts them in a, a third and very, very long situation. Third and 16 from the 30, Iowa two of six on third down conversions. Bass and Bayless line up in the eye. Smith is in the slot, bottom right. Iowa goes on the ground. Rick Bayless slashing his way to the 38, but it will be far short of the first down. Bobby Taylor, Pete Nauka coming up to make the hit, and the Hawks will have to give it up. Wisconsin defense playing very tough. Well, you're seeing two strong defenses here. Uh, the Iowa-Wisconsin game traditionally have always been low-scoring games, and this one seems to hold pretty much to form as they trade series in terms of punts. Pasquale booms one, sends Odoms back to the 10-yard line. Odoms one of the leading punt returners in the Big Ten, and he is smothered at the 22-yard line. It's Iowa 7 and Iowa Wisconsin 3. You're watching Iowa football right here on Sports Vision. Wisconsin takes over on the 22-yard line. It's first and 10. Bob here along with Keith Chappelle from Kennick Stadium in Iowa City on a cool overcast afternoon. Keys out of the pocket. And he connects with Reginald Tompkins. That place came up to make the stop. Reginald Tompkins is uh, the split end. He's a deep set on this Badger team. And the Hawkeyes were very uh, wary of him. He curled up. And he just fired the ball. Did a good job of threading the needle there, putting the ball to him in traffic. He's ranked seventh in the Big Ten in passing efficiency. The Hawkeyes have the number one passer in the country, and Mark Vlasic sitting on the sidelines right now. Armitrap. Originally, that play looked like it was intended to go outside. Armitrap saw a hole, tried to break it up the middle, and ran into number 99, Richard Pryor. Also, Brad Cross. Brett Frost is that freshman we talked about who was coming into this game was a third leading tackler for the Hawkeyes and really stepping in and performing admirably as a freshman. He was on just about everybody's All-American list and showing why. He's stepping in here as a freshman and contributing very big to this Hawkeye defense. Jeff Keppel checks in on third and one. The Hawkeyes up the line. And the call is to Artley. Artley may have got enough for the first down with his initial surge. He's pushed back. Just trying to bust it across the middle for one. The ball needed to get the 32, just past the 32 yard line. And now they say they did not get it. The Hawkeyes hold on third and one. That will bring up fourth and one, and in comes the punting team for the Badgers and this crowd of 67,000 plus getting the Hawkeye defense in ovation as they go off. Well, they're attacking there. They attack the Hawkeye defense at its heart, right up the middle with Jeff Dross and Breeze, and sh there was just no way to go for Hartley. 
Sobicki back at his 16-yard line. Peter Marciano is backed up to the 20. Marciano takes it at the 18. He's got no blocking at all. Marciano stopped cold at the 21-yard line. Had a flag on the play there. We don't know what the call is. Looks like they're bringing it back. 7.47 left in the first half. Iowa leads 7-3 over the Badgers. And it looks like there may be a penalty against Wisconsin. They'll kick it over. This Hawkeye punt return team has had a great job all season blocking a couple of punts and coming close to blocking several others. Uh, Marciano Hayden Fry is very, very high on as a return man, and they're allowing him scoring opportunities by they feel if they can punt the ball to Marciano and allow this return team an opportunity to set up. That's a very, very big sp scoring punch for them. So Hayden told him to kick it over. We want another opportunity at it. Now Sabicki back up to his 13-yard line. Marciano at the 30. Peter Marciano, the nephew of the late great prize fighter Rocky Marciano. Sabicki booms another one. Marciano again at the 18. This time he's got some blocking across the 20, the 25, and written down at the 30-yard line. Partington made the stop on Marciano. The Hawkeyes will take over first and 10 after 30 with 7.32 left in the half. Just a four-point lead for Iowa, 7-3. Surprisingly tough Wisconsin defense giving the Hawks trouble. Of course, remember the number one quarterback for the Hawks is out. Mark Vlasic with a shoulder problem. David Hudson is out with a quadricep problem. A couple receivers have not been healthy. Iowa has done an excellent job going 4-0 with all the problems they've had. They really have, and they've shown their depth all along the way, uh, feeling freely to, to shuttle players in and out, especially at running back. We've seen a variety of different running backs all run and all run well. Poholsky, where well, we've allotted him all week long on his performance and stepping up as a, a red-shirted freshman, really. There we see Dave Lassick giving him some instructions, and... Just the quality of the quarterbacking at Iowa now with Vlasic, not only Vlasic, we've got Paholski, we've got Hartleap, we've got uh, Dan McGuire, the freshman. Hayden Fry has got to be in a, a virtual seventh heaven when he thinks about his quarterback situation because it's not uh, who, it's a matter of which one. You know, he's got so many. Right, well, just two weeks ago, Paholski was a fourth string quarterback. He even said he had some doubts if he had made the right decision about coming to Iowa because of their depth at quarterback. Finds himself thrust into the Big Ten opener and shines the AP player of the week. Richard Bass across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Keith Browning, the free safety, finally making the stop. Big gainer for Bass, first down for Iowa. Watch how quick Bass hits this initial line of scrimmage. He hits it and he's running full speed by the time he's hit the third stride. That's one of the one things in a fullback that you want is after breaking that initial line of scrimmage, do they have the speed to turn it on and really get some yardage out of it? And Bass showing you there why Hayden Fry is very happy with him as a replacement for Dave Hudson. First and 10 for the 43. Bass again. Number 23 pushes his way up to midfield. Bass up to the 50. Stopped by Mike Reed. Reed the leading tackler last week for the Badgers, 22 tackles against Michigan, 15 solo. Reed is really coming into his own for the, the Badgers, but there you see Richard Bass has 21 yards on five carries thus far, but he's really provided the Hawkeyes with a, a much needed boost at that fullback spot because when you lose a guy the caliber of Dave Hudson, you really can't replace him, but Bass has done a, a great job of filling in. Three receivers in again for Iowa. They go to Bass on second and four. Not enough for the first down. About a yard shy, depending on the mark. Iowa showing a different set, though, this week with that long back. They've even been lining up Mark Mazzari, one of the split ends in the backfield, been splitting him out, going with three receivers, and still they run the ball. Well, this is what they used with David Hudson when he was uh, healthy. They opted to go with a one-back attack because it spread the field out. What you do when you put in three receivers is you don't allow the Badgers an opportunity to bunch linemen up on the line of scrimmage, and it really opens up your running game if you have a caliber running back at fullback, and the Hawkeyes have found that in Richard Bath. 
Marshall Cotton in motion. And the give is to Kevin Harmon, and Harmon picks up the first down. That time the Hawkeyes are to go with three backs. Harmon picks up the first down for the Hawks. You got to understand again, Harmon's not at full speed, and at half speed, he's got some of the best moves I've ever seen. He's showing you there why he and Brother Ronnie have uh, really brought a much to light to the Hawkeye fans. Just twisting and turning in midair and the ability to cut back allowed him to pick up that first down. The Hawks line up in the eye on first down. Bass and Harmon. 5.30 left in the half. It's Harmon again twisting his way down to the 37-yard line. Mike Boykins, the nose guard, making a stop. Craig Raditz also in on the stop, one of the outstanding linebackers for the Badgers, and that'll bring up second down in about six. You got an interesting uh, confrontation out here at the split end position. You got Robert Smith guarded by Nate Odoms on a man-for-man -man situation. Odoms considered by many one of the top uh, single coverage defensive backs in the Big Ten, and he's given Robert Smith a lot of opportunities, and let's see if the Hawkeyes go to it. Mahulski looking for Smith, and he's got him at the 32-yard line. So that time, Smith just running a little curl pattern out to the sideline. Odoms has to respect that sprinter speed that Robert Smith has because he has got no help over there at all. He really does, and then he allowed the cushion, and the Hawkeyes might do well to test this a little bit. Paholski, this is, as you pointed out, just a straight set pattern, and you see there all the room that Odoms gave Robert Smith, but he's following him across the field, so Odoms' responsibility all game long seems to be Robert Smith, and that may poise a, a certain situation for the Hawkeyes to exploit. It's Harmon again, dancing his way to the 28-yard line, runs into a host of Badgers, though, gang tackling Steve Brooks. Led the charge, a pickup of one, will be second down and nine. The Badgers are making the Hawkeyes fight for every yard here. This is a good drive by uh, Pahulski and the Hawkeyes. They're mixing their plays up pretty well with the short-range passes and the, the runs, but the Badger defense is really making them fight for it. Robert Smith now winds up in the slot. Pahulski, audible, and he'll go to the air. May have saw some single coverage across the middle. He had Robert Smith wide open, but way overthrown. Robert Smith broke into the middle of the end zone, didn't have a man within five yards of him. Pahulski knows he was open. This is a great call by Pahulski. He audibleized into it because when they went into the slot situation, they caused a mismatch in the Badgers secondary. What you had was a situation where Reed, an inside linebacker, was lined up individually guarding Smith man for man. And that won't work. No, not at all. Pahulski uh, audibleized to it, caught him in the right formation. The pass was overthrown, however, but it was a great call. Third down and eight. And Kevin Harmon may have dived over the 20 for the first down. He needed to get to the 20 yard line for the first down. Great call by the Hawks on third down in a passing situation. And it looks like the mark is going to be shy of the first down. That's a poor marking, but watch Ke Kevin Harmon do a good job of getting airborne for these extra yards here. Showing there, even with his injury coming off, He's a great runner in his own right. The blues you're hearing from the crowd is the fact that the officials mark this shy of a first down. Now, do they mark it where the ball is or do they mark it where his knee is down? In either case, uh, from the view I saw, it would have been under the... It would have been enough for a first down, but I think they're giving the marking where the knee initially touched, and you see a lot of discrepancy over it now. The Hawkeyes will call timeout to talk it over, see if they want to go for it. We'll take a timeout as well with 3.46 left. You're watching Iowa Football on Sports Vision. <laughs> Welcome back to Iowa City, Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes lead Wisconsin 7-3 with 3.46 left to play into the game. It is fourth and one Iowa. Call the timeout, and it looks like they're going to go for it. On fourth down, they need to get across the 20-yard line, actually less than one yard for the first down. Full house backfield, Cotton is in along with Harmon and Bass. And Pahulski with the fake, in trouble, is going to go down at the 28-yard line. Chad Vandezandi 
credit that to the Badgers secondary. They didn't buy this fake, although it's a good fake by Harmon, they didn't buy it at all. They were all over flag in the secondary, and there you see Reed doing a good job of collapsing in on, on Poholsky. That's the type of call that if it works, you're a genius, and if you don't, everybody says, why didn't you just bust it up the middle? And there Hayden Fry is explaining to Boholsky why it didn't work, and the fact that uh, that play should have went for six points, he's telling me. The Hawkeyes give it up. Half the 28-yard line, 340 left to play, and I was coming on the blitz. And Hartley finds an opening off left tackle and breaks it out to the 37-yard line. Anthony Wright came up from that secondary to make this stop. Iowa was coming with the blitz that time, got caught. The Badgers caught him and credited a good tackle by the Hawkeye secondary to keep this one short because George Davis was caught inside. Kyle Crow does a good job of coming up and initially making the stop because Hartley had a lot of running room there. A this pickup is, of second, it's second down and three, the ball at the 35. This is a big change of events for the Badgers, stopping the Hawkeyes on fourth down there. It could swing the momentum their way. Armand Trout with the pitch, and he gets just about to the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a yard or two. Bruce Gear, the senior from Madison, made the stop. And that'll bring up third down. The Badger runners are lining up too deep in their backfield. By the time Armand Trout's got the ball and is deciding which way to go, the Hawkeyes have got the hole all sealed up. And you're not going to cut cross field on the Hawkeyes very well. They did a good job last week as we talked about stopping uh, the premier runner in cutting back, and that was Lorenzo White. So I don't think Armand Trout's going to find many yards that way. The Badgers need three for the first down. Keys will go to the air across the middle, and it is complete. Bill Williams with a big gainer for the Badgers down the 34-yard line. Anthony Wright tried to go for the interception. Stopped by Anthony Wright. Anthony Wright finally made the stop. The Hawks went for the interception that time, missed, and then wide open. The Hawks gambled and gambled wrong. There we see Schmidt attempting to go for the interception. Williams almost loses the ball here and running. <laughs> then you see finally making the stop, but he was so wide open, he almost lost the, the football. This is a great opportunity for the Badgers, catching the Hawkeyes on two successive stunts and being able to capitalize on them. Less than two minutes left, 159. Keys again, deep drop across the middle, complete again. Down to the 18-yard line, Scott Bester. Stopped by Anthony Wright, but another first down for Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Badgers are fighting the Hawkeye secondary right in the middle, in the center of the field, wide open. Bester catches this ball, and here again, he's wide open, and he almost, he slipped, actually does slip and fall, or he could have picked up an extra five or six yards. But we talked about the Hawkeye zone being very vulnerable right in the middle, and if a quarterback's got the time and got the quality receiver who can get in the middle and hold on to the ball, they might find some daylight there. Wisconsin with just one timeout left. They're looking for seven. They're picking on Kenny Sims. And incomplete. Reggie Tompkins, number six, the intended receiver. Ken Sims, the senior from St. Louis, isn't going to be picked on by too many people. He's a very experienced player. Last week on Michigan State, the Spartans did a good job of running routes underneath him, but he made him pay for it in the end, coming up with two key interceptions, the last one sustaining a drive that could have gone for the winning touchdown. Second down and 10. And the draw play goes to Hartley, and Hartley is chopped down at the 15-yard line by Anthony Wright. We got a penalty flag on the play. I think this may go against the Badgers. Hartley, as he gets rambling downfield, would do far better just keeping himself in a straightforward situation. He's not big enough. Here we see the call. Personal foul. And again, this gets back to that rivalry between these two clubs. When you get down deep inside, players start pushing and shoving and hitting. Uh, they don't like each other, just to put it quite frank. Uh, Iowa and Wisconsin, not at all. Well, see, that's fine as long as they keep it within the field of play. What the refs aren't going to allow here is any of that late pushing and shoving in which someone can get hurt. 
Hardly was down on the play, and what the refs caught was one of the Wisconsin players giving a little extra nudge to a Hawkeye there, and they're paying dearly for it here. That takes them out of potential field goal range and sets up a third and long. Third down and 21 now from the 30. That is a break for Iowa because Wisconsin was on the move, had a sure three the way it looked, going for seven now. Lucky to get back in field goal range. Three receivers in. Two split wide right. That is where keys will roll. And wide open across the middle. It's Joe Armitrout. The pass was overthrown, picked off by Kyle Crow. I'll tell you what, though, if Keyes would have had that pass on the money, it had seven all over. Oh, Armin tried is wide open on this play. Not only did Crow come up with the interception, but they also had a personal foul on Armin Trot. But here you see Keyes spotting. Armin Trot is wide open at about the 10-yard line. He overthrows the ball very, very poorly. And on top of it, they trot off. Uh, here we see the refs trotting off 15 yards for a personal foul. They're going to assess to Armin Trot in hitting when he was on the ground. Big turn of events here for the Hawkeyes. Kyle Crow comes up with the interceptions and the Hawkeyes will take over at the 20 yard line with 59 seconds left in the half. They lead seven to three. A Wisconsin drive stopped by a penalty and a poor pass. Now remember again, this is a Wisconsin Badger team that comes in here 23 point underdogs. But we talked about their tradition. We talked about the fact that, yes, Hayden Fry has won six in a row, but they've all been tough games for these Hawkeyes, and this one is no different. Robert Smith is in. He is wide right. And the Hawks will run on first down. Harmon across the 20 to the 20-yard line. So Iowa electing to be a little conservative here, happy to go into the locker room with the second three lead. And Wisconsin will have to feel pretty good about that, although I think the momentum shifted some with that interception. It really did, but Wisconsin has got to, uh, to be very, very happy with the play now. They're facing a Hawkeye team that comes in here 10th ranked in the country, and they've played them down for down. Iowa going now without a huddle. The clock's still going for 29 seconds. They try the pitch. The pass was complete at the 28-yard line. Then Iowa tried the little pitch. Jim Morrow was the man that caught the pass, and they were going to try to swing it up to Kevin Harmon. Morrow was hit, though, and that ball lost That's at the 25-yard line. But Iowa trying a little gadget play. A little gadget play that could have cost them dealing there because uh, the Badgers had a super situation to, to, to catch that ball. I'll tell you what, though. If that play works, Harmon is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. We had a, a penalty on the play holding by the Hawkeyes that would have nullified it back, but that's one of those... Uh, that's when he just saved for yeah, uh, a rainy for, day. <laughs> for the end of a quarter, catch the team uh, loose and maybe not suspecting it. Alonzo had no chance at all of even getting a good pitch off. I love the way Hayden Fry set that up, though. On the first down, you run simple little play that's uh, designed just to run out the clock, so let the team get low to sleep, and all of a sudden you try to hit them with a gadget play and go for seven. Exactly, because even with uh, the attempt to go with a short range pass, had not the Badger been on top of that, Harmon, as you said, would have caught that ball and been long gone. Those are plays we work on at the end of the, uh, the practice when, we were, when I was at the university, and they were always fun plays to work because you knew if they worked, they worked well. Paholsky did something similar on that, uh, that fourth down uh, play action pass that uh, the Badgers were all over. This one, they were all over too. The Badgers know very well uh, Hayden Fry and his experience, and they know that uh, He's got to be watched on every situation, and they're doing a good job of reading a lot of these exotic plays, as Hayden was calling them, and playing them fundamentally well and preventing any long gains from them. Second down and 15, the clock has started. Iowa may not even get a playoff, and they will not. That is the end of the first half. Iowa with a four-point lead over the Badgers coming into this game. Iowa was a 23-point favorite. So the Hawks will take just a four-point lead, 7-3, into the locker room at halftime. Coming up, our halftime interview. Stay with us. You're watching Hawkeye Football right here on Sports Vision. In Iowa City, we are just about ready for the second half. The Hawkeyes lead the Badgers of Wisconsin. 7-3, a surprising first half. Iowa, 23-point favorite heading into this ball game. Here is the tail of the tape, Keith. Uh, four first downs for the Hawkeyes. That Wisconsin defense playing very well. 
They really are. We talked about going into the game, the pride the Badger defense had, and they're showing there. Uh, they've really done a good job, except for the one turnover they had. This game would be 3-0, uh, Wisconsin. 175 total yards for the Badgers, just 102 for the Hawkeyes. Individually, Marvin Artley with eight carries for 32 yards for the Hawks. Uh, Bass, six for 27. Bayless, five for 31. Paholski is five of seven. Keys, eight of 15. Two interceptions, but uh, he was impressive in a couple of drives for the Badgers. Well, on the two drives that he had, he did a good job of mixing his plays up well between the short range, passing range, and using his blockers well in terms of uh, the Wisconsin runners. The Hawkeyes are going to have to do a better job this second half of taking the ball, driving it downfield, and actually scoring. they got to put some points on the board. What do you tell your team if you go down in the locker room just to, with a 7-3 lead and you're that big a favor? Do you try to kick them maybe a little bit, get them motivated a little more? Are we seeing what everyone had talked about, a little bit of a letdown? Or is this a, a Wisconsin team with nothing to lose coming in and just teeing off? Well, this Wisconsin team really has taken a, a good charge this game. But if you're Hayden Fry, you come to the troops, you explain to them, hey, man, we've got them outmatched. We're, uh, all we have to do is play our game. If there we see Velasquez and Paholsky talking. If the Hawkeyes get in a good rhythm of their offense and the defense has played well, then we'll see the Hawkeyes of old. And we're just about ready for the kickoff of the second half. It is Iowa 7 and Wisconsin 3. We'll be back in just a moment. Now at Kinnick Stadium, ready for the opening kickoff of the second half. The Hawkeyes with a 7-3 lead over Wisconsin. The Badgers very much in this game. Very much in the game and very much primed for an upset. We talked about early on in the game that the Badgers are coming in here. Although they've not won against the Hawkeyes with Hayden Fry, they've played all the games traditionally well. And in a game like this with nothing to lose, they're coming out firing it up and taking it right to these Hawkeyes. Jim Hillis, the first-year Wisconsin coach, uh, said that we fully expected to be 4-0 heading into their ball game last week against Michigan. They lost in Hawaii 2017. The only win for the Badgers came against Northern Illinois 35-20. They lost to Nevada, Las Vegas, lost to Wyoming, and then lost to Michigan. The Hawkeyes, of course, 4-0 heading into this game, uh, ranked 10th in the country. It appeared to be a mismatch on paper, but it is very much a ball game on the field. We're ready for the second half. The Hawkeyes will receive Kevin Harlan and Robert Smith are back deep at the 10-yard line, and Robert Smith lets it sail over his head into the end zone, and it'll come back first and 10 at the 20 for the Hawkeyes. Tom Paholsky, the quarterback for the Hawkeyes in the first half. Uh, had some time to throw the football a couple times. Some receivers wide open just couldn't quite connect. The Hawkeyes don't seem like they've quite clicked on offense today like they have in past games. Well, you know, there was some question coming in about uh, possibly raining. The Hawkeyes came out with their weather shoes, but the weather's been fine. They've just had lackluster performances. And let's see if they come out with a spark here on their first series. Bass and Harmon in the backfield to start the second half, and it is... Harmon up to the 30-yard line and the first down. Keith Browning, the free safety, made the stop. But Harmon with a 10-yard gain on the opening play of the second half for Iowa. Harmon shows here why people are so high on him. He doesn't hesitate at all in getting in the air, jumping over, leaping over people. This is the most extensive use we've seen of Kevin Harmon all season long. And if he's back, this is going to be a big plus for the Hawkeyes. To the first down, it's first and 10 at the 30. Harmon again gets the call, a pickup of three, maybe four yards. Uh, his brother Ronnie now playing professional football, and also he has a brother Derek who uh, was playing for the San Francisco 49ers, a very talented football family from Walton, New York. And if he gets into the flow of this game, it's really going to add a new dimension because Kevin Harmon catches the ball well out of the background, uh, out of the backfield, and does a good job on flare passes. So they're looking to see him back and able to go the full game. Robert Smith in motion lines up in the slot now. Baholski will check off. Second and six. The Badgers coming with some extra pressure, and this pass. Intended for Mark Mazzari at the 45-yard line. It looked like he was bumped before the pass. Incomplete, though. Tim Koenig on the stop. 
Missouri sophomore from Park Ridge, Illinois. One of those walk-ons and has been so successful here this season in Iowa for Hayden Fry. Mike Flagg, the big tight end from Cedar Falls, checks in. Missouri goes out on third down and six from the 34. The Hawkeyes line up with two wide receivers, Smith and Missouri, wide right. Double tight end, and it is Bass. Short of the first down to the 38, a flag down in the backfield. Iowa does not convert on third down. And we'll wait and see what the flag is. It appears that it is against Iowa. Preliminary signal is holding against the Hawkeyes. And penalties were a big factor in that Michigan State ball game. Some critical times the Hawkeyes had big penalties called against them. They were a major factor in the fourth quarter of last week's game, and the Hawkeyes uh, would do well to clean up on a lot of that to put themselves in a better scoring position. In the first half, Iowa penalized four times for 35 yards. Wisconsin four times for 45 yards. Number 27 is Gary Costabala. He'll putt from his 35, and the ball takes an Iowa bow to cross the 20. Still going down to the 14-yard line, so the Hawkeyes will push Wisconsin back after they were unable to move the football in their first possession. Pastor Bala booms that one back to the 14-yard line. Well, the first half was just a series of both teams returning punts back and forth, and I think what we're going to find is whichever team catches the momentum here in the third quarter will really stand a good chance of uh, getting something going. The Badgers... Like we said in the first half, did a good job of mixing their plays up. Let's see if they can do as well the second half. But Keyes, once again, is the quarterback to start the second half. He was 8 of 15 for 112 yards through two interceptions in that first half. Armantrout and Hartley in the backfield. It's Armantrout out to the 20-yard line. Brad Quas, John Breeze in on the stop. That'll bring up second down and four, gain of six. Gain of six on the play, second down four from the 20. That's second and four from the 20. And Keyes checks off. And the ball is loose. Picked off by the Hawkeyes. Tyrone Gamble across the 35-yard line. And it appears that Joe Mott came up with the loose football. Number 97, Mott from Endicott, New York. This is the Wisconsin Badger running back Larry Emery back into the ball game. I thought that was him on the initial play. Crow just does a good job of popping the ball loose and uh Mott comes up with the recovery. This is a big break for the Hawkeyes. They scored in the first quarter on something similar, a turnover re recovered by the defense, and the Hawkeyes capitalized on it great. This might be the momentum we talked about, and it, if so, it's right in the Hawkeyes' favor. Joe Mott playing the best football of his career, according to Hayden Fry. The Hawks will have it in excellent field position at the 37. Robert Smith had it in his hands at the 30, in and out, incomplete. Paholsky, plenty of time to throw. Nate Odoms, the man going one-on-one -on -one with Robert Smith. Great duel there. Well, Nate Odoms uh, had an opportunity here because of the pass being so far to, to collapse back on Robert Smith, and that may have had, a, have had a big part in Robert Smith dropping that pass because he could hear Odoms' footsteps all on his back and just, just took his concentration off at the last minute and didn't come up with it. Second down of 10, the draw. Picks up eight to the 28-yard line. Harmon, who is coming off that leg injury, sprinting his way, twisting and turning to the 28. This is great news for the Hawkeyes to be able to see Kevin Harmon back in action and running the way he ran well. You see him there just picking his holes, cutting and turning, avoiding Odoms there, stepping through two or three tacklers and coming up with a great gain for eight yards. Bass and Morrow check out. It is third down and two. Tight formation, double tied in for the Hawks. And Iowa does not get enough for the first down. 
Richard Bass. The Hawkeyes elected to go with a short running play there, and the Badgers were all over, collapsing there. We got a field goal attempt by Houtman. The ball marked at the 29-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard attempt by Houtman. And it is long enough, but it is no good. Wide left. So the Badgers hold with 11.23 left in the third quarter. It is Iowa 7, Wisconsin 3. This is the field goal, and Wisconsin takes over first and 10 after 29. 7-3 ball game here in Iowa City. Keys, plenty of time, and he will not be able to find a receiver and go down. Drost was there, along with Haight. Also, Brad Klaus. The Hawkeye defensive secondary had all the receivers covered. Keys had the time initially setting up. There we see Breeze coming through. Dross finally making the stop, but as Keys set up, he had nowhere to throw the ball, and electing not to throw into a covered man, chose to eat the ball, and thus we have a seven-yard loss. Great defensive play by the total Hawk defense. Second down and 17. And the misdirection play. And Larry Emery has checked into the ball game. Emery had been hurt, nursing a hamstring pull, gets his first carry here. Now Emery's going into this, this season was in position to break uh, all the Wisconsin records and become the all-time leading rusher for the Badgers. He's had to overcome some nagging injuries, but with him in the ball game, this really provides the, the Badgers with a potent running attack. Emery's second team all Big Ten last year. Hasn't played in two weeks because of a hamstring pull. Keys rolling across the middle, complete at the 40-yard line. Rick Schmidt came up to make the stop. Got another first down for the Badgers. This is the, the situation that Larry Emery provides. He uh, freezes the Iowa linebackers and forces them to have to stay at home. That was Scott Bester, uh, the receiver for the Badgers, just curling up in the zone. Keys having the time, he's doing a good job of threading the needle. I, he initially marked it as a first down, and I sure, I'm sure it is a first down. I don't know what the referees are out there looking for right now. Could be a contact lens. Somebody looking for a small, shiny object at about the 40-yard line. Shouldn't be too hard to find on that green turf. All right. Knowing the way the rivalries go, if uh, it was the opposing team, someone would probably have stepped on it. <laughs> A lot of enthusiasm goes into these games. These uh, Badgers and Hawkeyes, although uh, the Badgers aren't playing well this season, they take a lot of pride going into the game, and uh, we are, we're seeing it here because they're playing the Hawkeyes very, very tough. First and 10 at the 40. And it is Emory. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Mike Burke came up to make the hit. Number five. Emory last year against Iowa ran for 104 yards. The Hawkeyes stopped this play before it ever got started. Right up the middle there, you see the collapsing. That was uh, Hate collapsing in there, tackling at the shoestrings, but they had the middle very well stacked up. Appears to be some confusion in that Wisconsin backfield. Second down and 10. Again, Keys will go to the air. He's in trouble. Gets it off across the middle, intended for Tompkins. Incomplete at the 45-yard line, and Keys went down hard at the 30-yard line. David Haight has been all over Keys all day long. If he's not tackling him, he's forcing him into situations where it's making it awful difficult to throw the football. Keys was rolling one way, had Tompkins, the receiver, running a curl route, which is just a basic middle route in the middle of the field but it's awful difficult this is the situation we talked about earlier it's awful difficult for a quarterback to roll one way and attempt to get a solid pass off going the other way the Hawkeyes have picked off quite a few of those all season big defensive play for the Hawks third and ten Iowa in a zone in that secondary and the pass is complete to Tompkins down to the 20-yard line Anthony Wright was the man to save 
the touchdown, but a big play for the Badgers and a pretty pass by Bud Keys just laying that ball up. Keys does a good job of waiting here. We've got um, Anthony Wright guarding Tompkins man for man, and Keys just sits in the pocket. He's running a post pattern, running straight away from him. Now, both of these guys have got great speed. Reggie Thompson does a good job of catching the ball, and had he kept his feet, that would have been six points. That was Tompkins' 14th catch of the season. He's averaging almost 15 yards a catch. And it is Emory on the ground, down to the 18-yard line. Wisconsin wisely trying to beat the Hawkeyes in the air. The Hawks have given up only an average of 27.5 yards a game on the ground. So most teams have not been able to run on Iowa this year. But Wisconsin having some success going to the air. Having some success, and the success is because of the fact that with a back like Larry Emory in the game, they've got to honor his speed. So a lot of the play-action passes will have a lot more potent power in keeping the Hawkeye defense honest. Second down and seven. It's Armantrout. And Armantrout goes nowhere. Burke. Eight on the stop. Again, Iowa, excellent. On the ground, stopping that run. That'll bring up third down and six. Third down and six, right in the middle of the field. This is a good situation for the the Badger field goal team because they're right in the middle. I'd look for them to go with a pass here. Third and six. Kennedy in motion. Now Tompkins, wide left, and looking into the right corner. And the pass is intended for Kennedy. Was not even catchable. Kerry Burt was there. Now, will Jim Harris decide to go for it, or will he go for the three? Uh, it's obvious he'll go for the three points. The ball is right in the middle of the field here. He's very confident in his place kicker to come up with the three points. But Richard Pryor and Quest put the pressure on there to allow Keys to throw that ball. Keys has got his receivers open. He just doesn't have the time, or when he does have the time, is in awkward situations to throw the ball because the receiver was open on that play. Gregory with the 27-yard attempt. It's long enough, and it is good. So with 7-19 left in the third quarter, Wisconsin has pulled within one. 7-6 here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. We'll be back with four on sports. The Iowa fans expected to see a blowout this afternoon in Iowa City. Hayden Fry said... Don't be too surprised. These Badgers may be a 23-point underdog, but they come to play, and they have this afternoon in Iowa City. 7-6 our score. Iowa with a one-point lead, the 10th-ranked team in the nation, a 4-0 record against a team that is 1-4, but all the stats go out the window when Iowa and Wisconsin get together. Oh, yeah. Good. Great indication of that is if you saw the sideline shot of Hayden Fry, he had his glasses off. Anytime Hayden takes his glasses off, you know it's, it's getting pretty serious now. Harmon and Robert Smith are back deep. Gregory will put it back into play. Just a one-point lead for the Hawkeyes, and it could very easily be 6-0. Wisconsin giving up a fumble deep in their own end early in the ball game. Iowa took that in for a score. That last scoring drive took four minutes, four seconds. 71-yard drive in 10 plays. Finally, Gregory capping it off with a 34-yard field goal. I mean, if you think about it, Bob, other than the initial scoring drive, which came onto that turnover by the Hawkeyes, the Badgers have shut this Hawkeye offense down. Iowa quarterback situation, Mark Velasic is out with a shoulder injury. You have Chuck Hartley, whose brother also plays on this team with a finger injury. Dan McGuire, the freshman from California, is also available, but Paholski has gone the entire way. And across the middle, he's got Morrow at the 40-yard line for a big gainer for the Hawkeyes. That may be just what the doctor ordered. Paholski initially sets up and is looking for Robert Smith streaking down the sideline. He shows a great arm there. You see him recocking and finding Morrow, who has made these plays all season long, straight down the middle. Morrow does a good job of catching the ball, keeping his concentration on the ball, and coming up with a big, big gainer that now puts the Hawkeyes in Badger territory and in great field position. Morrow has been the big play man, averaging over 20 yards a catch 
And it is Richard Bass, slant right, down to the 35 yard line. 36. Going back to Jim Morrow catching that uh, that long play, what he does better than anyone else is he's so deceptive in terms of his routes that by the time he's at full speed, even though these Badger secondary men are in a foot race with far and away out distance him, he positioned himself that he's in perfect position and he's got two or three steps on every Badger streaking down the field. Robert Smith lines up in the slot. Iowa goes with one setback. And it is Richard Bass. Bass. A gain of three, maybe four yards. Not enough for the first down. The 31-yard line stopped by Michael Reed. And that'll bring up a third down and short for Iowa. You can see a difference. Just one play makes. The one big play tomorrow, and now the Hawkeyes going with the spread offense, and the Badger, Badgers having to honor it, have to honor it, opens up the running game for a run running back situation in terms of Richard Bass. On third and two, Marshall Cotton and Rick Bayless check into the ball game. Iowa with three backs lined up. Now Cotton in motion. The pitch goes to Bayless. And Rick Bayless crosses the 30, has a first down for Iowa. Rick Bayless takes it across the 30, and Iowa is threatening again. Rick Bayless gets this first down on extra effort. He's stopped initially short of the first down. We'll see the first Badger there, but he just starts to lunge forward over the top of the Badgers, and he picks up the additional two yards. So heading into that play, Iowa was only one of seven on third down conversions. They have been stopped on third down by the Badgers, but not this time. First to 10 from the 29. And it is Rick Bayless still on his feet. He's got a lot of room left side. Bayless down to the eight yard line. Rick Bayless somehow found an opening, broke loose with one, two tackles, and now it's first and goal for the Hawks. We talk about Bayless running from north to south. He takes this ball and just doesn't stop. You see the initial wave there. Thought he was down. He just keeps running, eluding tacklers. And it had not, not been for number 36. That's Keith Browning. And he has having a, a difficult time bringing him down. Great run by Rick Bayless. Bayless, seven carries for 55 yards. First and goal for Iowa from the seven. And it's straight at the middle. This time, Bayless can go nowhere. Rick Bayless gang tackled at the six-yard line, possibly a pickup of one. That'll bring up second down and seven. 4.29 left in the third quarter. Iowa with a one-point lead over Wisconsin, 7-6. It's going to be interesting to see what the Hawkeyes choose to do here. Uh, with the big offensive line all season long, they've chosen to just stick to their knitting and ground the ball out on the ground, but you're playing right into the heart of this Badger defense. They're inside linebackers. Bayless and Bass in the backfield. They'll block. And across the middle, it was Morrow, the intended receiver, overthrown by Pahoski. That'll bring up third and seven. Jim Morrow turning into the big play receiver for the Hawkeyes here, running a basic uh, end zone pattern. Pahoski may have thrown that ball a little too hard because it was open in a situation. Pahoski put a little too much, too much English on it that time, and it went way over his head. Two years ago, it was a 10-10 tie between the Hawks and Wisconsin. Last year, the Hawks won it 23-13. This year, it is 7-6 with four minutes, two seconds left to play. Third and seven. Pahoski rolls right. And Mark Cook, the intended receiver, overthrown. Cook had nowhere to go on the edge of the end zone. Nate Odoms was right there with him. And that'll bring up fourth down. Howland warming up on the sidelines. We've got an offensive interference uh, by the Hawkeyes. Don't know what it's going to be. Here you see Bayless in the flat. Boholsky sees he's well covered. He sets up, aiming this ball for Cook. But it's well overthrown out of his out of his reach. We had an interference call by the Hawkeyes, uh, which was the flag down. They're marking that off now, which is going to make this a a little longer kick for Hoblin. 
Here again, we're having the Badgers holding, and this is the thing we talked about. This Badger defense has played very stingy to the hosting Hawkeyes. Outland missed one earlier in the game. This one will be a 39-yard attempt after that penalty. Rob Allen has hit some big ones in his career. Won two ball games last year with last-minute field goals. And this one is good. So Outland, Outland extends that Iowa lead to 10-6 with 3.53 left to play in the third quarter. Every Saturday afternoon, Sports Vision brings you live NCAA football action featuring Army, Navy, and Air Force. Tune in each week as the academies flex their muscles against a formidable lineup of conference and independent powers. Only Sports Vision gives you complete football coverage all season long. That's live football every Saturday afternoon on Sports Vision. Here in Iowa City, the Hawkeyes have struggled to a 10-6 lead over the Badgers of Wisconsin. 3.53 left in the third quarter, and Wisconsin has been very tough when you got deep in their own territory. Well, when you get into the heart of the Big Ten se season, the thing that you've got, they always made the misnomer about it being the, the Big Two and the Little Eight. But these teams have always traditionally played tough bat football games, and the Badgers are no kin to upset. They have had the Ohio State Buckeyes number the last couple of years, beating them when they were in the top 10, and they, they don't have too much fear coming into Iowa City. They, they are well aware that this Hawkeye team is a great team, but they feel they've got the caliber of players to play up to them, and with the addition of Larry Emery in the backfield, that's really going to add a lot of options to this Badger offense. George Murphy will kick up for the Hawkeyes. And again, a low line of the Hawkeyes have been going to that kick the last three, four games. It's out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And a lot of teams are going to that squib kick now. They've been very successful with it. Uh, very difficult to return the ball. Well, what you got is they instituted a new NCAA rule where they're kicking it off now from the 35-yard line. And uh, the Hawkeyes uh, have been spoiled for many years because they had Reggie Roby, who prided himself in booming the ball uh, five and ten yards out of the end zone and after you eliminated Reggie you, you got back to not poor kickers but normal kickers I mean these kickers it, it takes to to go some to put the ball into the end zone and with the return men on both sides being what they are you stand a lot better options in squib kicking the ball because you allow more opportunities for a miscue on the return team's part it can uh, an up man may touch touch the ball inadvertently and more so than that, it, it confuses uh, the return team and not allowing them to set up a patented return. Illegal procedure against Iowa. They'll have to re-kick it again. Murphy this time will kick from his 30. Dan Kistling and Nate Odoms are deep. Odoms, one of the top return men in the country. They'll try to kick it away from him if they can. But it is Kistling. Yes, Kistling with the return. And he crosses the 35 out to the 38-yard line. So good return by Kistling. Wisconsin will take over first to 10 at the 48. That last scoring drive, 10 plays. Wisconsin drives 80 yards. Check that high with 80 yards at the time. 316. Finally, Rob Howland put it through from 39 yards out. He had missed one earlier. And Iowa leads 10 6 here in the third quarter at Kinnick Stadium. That's the time left in the game in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 39. Armand drop across the 40 to the 42. So far, Iowa has done an excellent job of stopping that run. It has been the pass that has hurt them today. Well, Joe Armand tried his back to his natural position now, moving from tailback to fullback. And the Hawkeyes, as you said, have done a good job of stuffing their ball up the middle, but uh, they haven't been able to contain some of the outside pressure that the Badgers are putting on with their pitches and their rollout passes. Second down and eight. Keys will go to the air. And the opinion receiver was Brent Kennedy. Kennedy tried to go with it before he caught the football. Incomplete. And that will bring up third and eight. Well, the Badgers have, had, have been playing all game long with either 
drop passes or inadvertent throws. There have been several occasions where the Badger receivers have been open and Keyes has not had the time or been in poor position to be able to throw it. I mean, when you talk about a sprint out pass, uh, this is the injury that sidelined uh, San Francisco 49er great uh, Joe Montana. It's awful difficult to be rolling one way and twist your entire body back the next way in an effort to throw. I was shifting on the line trying to confuse Bud Keys. Third down and eight. Keys is in trouble and just dumps it off to Brad Kennedy. Kennedy is popped at the 42-yard line. Ken Sims, but a penalty marker is down on the play at the 47. We've got markers all over the field. There is some hidden going on downstairs now. I mean, both teams, Keys not having anyone open, choosing to just dump this ball off. Here, and watch this lick he takes. This is now that's Ken Sims. And there may have been a clip for, on Ken Sims there. It looked like somebody coming up from behind trying to block him. But we had Kerry Burt walking off the field on the other sideline. It looked like he took a, a shot. And it is a clip against the Badgers. We have two penalties on the Badgers. Two penalties against Wisconsin. George Davis will talk it over with the official and then confer with Hayden Fry. Well, we had a holding penalty and a clip, and what they're trying to determine now is which is the greater of two evils here. And it was a third down play. It was third and eight, and the Badgers did not get enough for the first down. Do you give them another shot at it, or do you decline the penalty? I think what the Hawkeyes should do is decline the penalty because it will turn the ball over, and that's what they do. They decline the penalty here and puts the ball back into the Hawkeyes' possession here. A couple of three shots for the Badgers. Oh, definitely. 3.03 left in the third quarter. Iowa leads Wisconsin 10-6. The Hawkeyes will get the football back. Peter Marciano is back at the 10-yard line. Scott Sapecki, one of the top punters in the country, will kick. Last 12 games, Sapecki has hit at least one punt for over 50 yards. He angles this one down the left sideline. It bounces out after 13-yard line. So great punt by Sapecki. That last drive by the Hawkeyes should have gave their offense plenty of confidence there. They took the ball, although they didn't score a touchdown. They did a good job of mixing their plays up. Poholski, the big uh, gainer, going along tomorrow for a big gainer. But uh, he used all the players well. And I think uh, with Harmon and Bayless both healthy and both running hard, this really opens up a lot of options for the Hawkeyes. Poholski again at quarterback, the AP Offensive Player of the Week for the Hawkeyes. That big game he had against Michigan State. The give is to Bayless, and Bayless goes nowhere. Greg Raditz came up to make this stop. Raditz, one of those outstanding linebackers for the Badgers, had missed the last couple of ball games with a nerve problem in his shoulder. Was questionable head, heading into this ball game, as was Larry Emery, but now both have seen action. Well, when you talk about Radix and Emery, you're talking about the, the top two players on both sides of the ball for the, the Badgers. Both of them all Big Ten performers, both of them looking to go very high in the draft next year. Hawks line up with two wide receivers left. Got to stay on the ground. Rick Bayless climbs over a couple of Badgers out to the 22-yard line. Still not enough, though, for the first down. Keith Browning, the free safety from Newport News, Virginia, came up to make the stop. Bayless coming into this game was a leading rusher for the Hawkeyes, and he has a phenomenal average for a ball carrier. He picks his hose well. He keeps himself moving laterally north to south. And after initially being hit by anyone, if you watch his movement, he'll dive, lunge, or crawl forward for an extra two or three yards on every carry. And that sprung him for quite a few long gainers. Three backs in for Iowa. Grant Goodman checks in along with Bayless. And it is Bayless for the first down. Rick Bayless, the second man through, slices across the 25 for the first down. Bobby Taylor made the stop, but first down for the Hawks. 120 left in the third quarter. Iowa trying to give herself some breathing room after that big punt by Sapecki. It'll be first and 10 after 27.
Bayless and Bass line up in the eye. Again, it is Bayless picking, weaving his way across the 30 to the 32. You know, that's one of the things that he does so well. He's able to get that extra one, two, maybe even three yards, just leaning his body forward. He is, and it, that shows great, not only great balance, but great leg strength, because Bayless is not a, a big guy, well under 200 pounds, and he's initially being stopped by inside linebackers who are 30 to 40 pounds heavier than him, but he keeps driving his legs, and this is what's allowing him to break free from a lot of tackles, and when he is tackled, he lunges forward for that extra two or three yards we talk about. Mr. Bass picks up the first one. Second and three, and the Hawks get on the ground, and another first down for Iowa. Mike Reed made the stop, but another first down for the Hawks. They're on the move. And the crowd starting to get into the ball game. Aiden Fly with just a four-point lead as time winds down in the third quarter. 15 seconds left. This will be the last play of the third quarter. First and 10 from the 39. Richard Bass fights his way for a tough one, possibly two yards, and that's the end of three quarters. Iowa leads Wisconsin 10-6. You're watching Hawkeye football from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, right here on Sports Vision. We'll be it has been a surprising Wisconsin team that has stayed with the Hawkeyes coming into this game. Iowa was a 23-point favorite, but with 15 minutes left to play, the Hawkeyes have just a 10-6 lead, but they are on the move on the move is right and uh, it really goes to show that a lot of the odds makers don't take into account uh, the stability that's in the Big Ten. These teams, uh, although they may not have the one loss record, can on any given day, as the old slogan goes, beat anybody. And for Holsky, plenty of time. He's throwing it all. Robert Smith's got it hit out of his hands. For Holsky going for the home run. He puts his hands on his head. Robert Smith had it in his hands and just dropped it. The speedster from Dallas, Texas had a step on his man, couldn't hang on. There's no one that feels worse about that than Robert Smith himself because Paholsky let that ball fly. That was a good 60-yard pass. Robert, as you mentioned, had two or three steps on, on the players, and it's good to see the Hawkeye uh, offense tell him to don't, don't worry about it, shake it off, come back, get the next one. That brings up a third and seven. Paholsky, 6 of 12 for 83 yards this afternoon. And he goes short to Rick Bayless. Bayless puts his head down, tries to squirm across to the 50 for a first down. It will depend on the mark if he got the first down, and it does not look like he got it from where the official is marking the football. They will call for a measurement. This is going to be a big play if he doesn't get it because he turns the ball over to the Badgers, and what could have easily been six points. I think it's uh, important to mention, here we're seeing the stretch for the, the ball, and ooh, that is close. And they're saying, tough call for Hayden Fry if it's not close enough either. It is just shy. You're at midfield. 14.30 left to go. He's going for just a four-point lead, and I have not seen Gary Castroballa pass, and Crook will check in. The Hawkeyes are going to go for it. Most coaches will tell you, if I can't get one yard, I shouldn't be out there. Fourth and one from the 49. Full house backfield for the Hawks. Goodman, Bass, line up with Bayless. And it is Richard Bass for the first down and more. Down to the 44. The Hawkeyes powering their way into Wisconsin territory. Richard Bass is an excellent selection to give the ball to because he's built so low to the ground to begin with, and he drives the ball so well. Watch him. He just never even comes up. This is almost like right out of the blocks. He's initially stopped there by a badger, but he spins off and gets an extra two to three yards to boot. That's an excellent play call because Bass, being short to begin with, has got such great leg drive that he never even looked up. He ran that ball just like a sprinter out of, out of starting blocks. Richard Bass, just 5'9 from Omaha. Paholsky checks off, tries to go to Jim Morrow, and it is incomplete at the 38-yard line. 
that being just a basic quick hitter play to the, the, the split end model. He overthrew that. So at the end of this ball game, the Hawkeyes were leading the nation in total offense, averaging 496 yards a game. They led the nation in scoring as well, averaging 48.3 yards. But today, they've only been able to get 10 points on the board. And Wisconsin handing some of those to them early. Rick Bayless stopped at the 44. Craig Raditz. He's been calling number 53 a lot this afternoon. Raditz stood him up, made the stop. Now will bring up third and long. Official attendance today at Kinnick Stadium, 67,700, and they've seen a ball game. Bayless will come out. Goodman checks into the game on third down. Iowa needs nine for the first. The ball at the 43. He will throw. Still has time. And it is picked off. Nate Odoms. Check that. It is number 36. Keith Browning with the interception. It looked like Paholsky was hit. Yeah, this he play, let go of the ball. This play, you see there, as Paholsky winds up and throws, he has his arm hit because this ball just flutters. He was attempting to go to Robert Smith. Browning in the zone picks it off, and had he not stumbled, he could have gone for some good yards. Look at the Badgers again. We talked about all game long the ability to turn over plays, and these Badgers have really nullified the Hawkeye offense from being able to score a touchdown. First and 10 from the 35. And it is Emory. George Davis made the stop on Larry Emery didn't play any in the first half, but in the second half started in the backfield. The thing both teams have done very well, and that's kept this game as close as it is, is they've both been able to control the ball once they've had it. The, the Hawkeyes and the, the Badgers in, in the second half have put together long, controlled plays that have eaten up quite a bit of the clock, because here we find ourselves in the fourth quarter, but they just haven't been able to punch it over for any major score. And again, it is Emory. Needed to get to the 45 for the first down. It'll be third down and two. Sims up to make the stop along with Anderson. Now, Emory, Aaron, yeah. Emory provides a lot of the speed the Badgers need in that backfield. Uh, with Ardley and Armitrod, although they had two big, strong running backs, they didn't have, quite have the speed they have. Emory gives that to him. He gives them a breakaway threat. Big defensive down for the Hawks. Third and two at the 43. See if they go to Hartley. Emory and Hartley line up in the eye. And the pitch is to Emory. And Emory may not have gotten it. Emory was stacked up just short of the 45 guard line. Again, it will depend on where the mark was. It did not look like his helmet crossed the 45 yard line. And it is shy. Joe Mott came up to make the stop along with Davis. This is going to be a... And now a big decision for the Badgers. 11.35 left. And it appears they need about a foot. There you see George Davis motioning to the sideline about how long he thinks it is that they need for the first. And, a, and attempting to go for the measurement here, what that does is allow the coach time to decide what he's going to do. If I were the coach for the Badgers, looks like they're going for it. They... Their defense has been playing well, so they feel that they have a, a super opportunity to, to go for it. Now, that shows a lot of confidence, not only in their offense, but in the Badger defense, because you don't want to give the Hawkeyes the ball in this type of territory. Jeff Chet Keppel checks into the ball game on short yardage. Iowa lining up with nine people on the line. The give is to the second man through Embry, and he may not have made it. The Hawkeyes are signaling that he did not make it. Emory tried to leap the line for the first down. I think if you consider that like a touchdown, they're going to give it to him. Now the official is marking the ball on the 45-yard line, and it is a first down. So Emory did break the plane as he crossed the 45, so the Badgers can convert on a big third down play. That's a very big third down play because you're giving them sustaining a drive here for the Badgers who 
have the possibility of going 55 yards and actually taking the lead in this game. First and 10 for the 45, and I'll tell you, Larry Emery has sparked this club playing in the second half. They're looking deep for Tompkins, and Tompkins is turned around at a flag down on Ken Sims. Pass interference at the 14-yard line. The pass was underthrown. Reginald Tompkins tried to come back for it. It looked like Kenny Sims might have got his legs caught up with Tompkins as he went for it. An official right there through the flag. This is a great call by the official. If the fans didn't like it, uh, the, ball by, the ball by Keys was underthrown. Tompkins and Sims are, have got a foot race going on here. The only advantage Tompkins has is he's looking back at Keys. Once he sees the ball is underthrown, he's coming back to it. And if you can catch in the corner of your screen down here in the corner, watch Sims there. He stuck his hand right in there at the last possible minute before the ball came. Hard to see on that replay because it happened before the ball got there. Hey, Hard to fly, obviously upset with the call. Very upset. He's upset also in the way where they're positioning the ball now. On pass interference, they have a rule where they give you 10 yards. And Fry is questioning why the markoff was so large. And now you got the referees bringing it back. So point well taken by Aiden Fry. Badgers almost picked up an extra 10 yards. Oh, they that definitely time. did. And I think uh, you would have had Hayden Fry on the field doing a Billy Martin act if they'd, have kept, <laughs> if they'd have kept that up. That's a good play by the Badgers, though, testing Sims on the other side. We talked about Anthony Wright being a red-shirted freshman filling in for Keaton Smiley. That's another area that the Badgers may want to attempt to go after the Hawkeyes at. First and 10 from the 40. The Badgers line up in the eye with Emory and Hartley. And it is Emory trying to get outside, and he is Scott George Davis. Oh, hey. Got a flag on the play again. The, the players are going to have to keep their cool here because let's see what they call. This action went on after the Emory was down. <laughs> the referee just wants to call it. He keeps getting help from two different officials. There it is. Okay. Looks like offsetting penalties. Offsetting penalties. The personal foul was on the Hawkeyes, though, after the play. And I think they're going to mark off. I don't know what they're calling here. Well, they may mark them both off. They marked off five for delay of game against Wisconsin. And now they're going to walk off the Baker penalty against the Hawkeyes. This is not a very popular call. <laughs> the ref chose to do it that way to signify both calls and show the, the yards being marked off in both cases. It really puts the Badgers in super field position, but it, it's really going to be a test for these, uh, for both teams, really. A lot of the emotions are flying high. We're getting into the fourth quarter here, but they're going to have to keep their cool. The players are really going to have to keep ahead of them and play football as opposed to getting into the pushing and shoving match. And now the crowd noise becomes a factor. This is something that Hayden Fry has complained about, especially the last week when Iowa was on the road, Michigan State. And now the officials coming on the sidelines. You know those officials have heard Hayden Fry's comments about the noise problem and how he felt that the Hawkeyes were singled out last week because his quarterback could not check off, could not give his signals to his wide receivers. It was so noisy in East Lansing. Some of the Hawkeyes motioning to the crowd to hold the noise down. You get 67,000 people booing, and you just cannot hear if you're a wide receiver. You cannot hear a signal way outside. No, you really can, and they do a good job of preventing that. But now uh, the quarterbacks on both sides are instructed, and they actually have drills in this because of the fact that going into the competitor stadium, this is a big factor in the fourth quarter, that he's taught, Keyes has been taught to pull out, pull out of there. If he can't hear, the Hawks show blitz and then back off. It's first and 10 at the 30. Play action pass. Keys has got time. Little short pass is complete to the 24-yard line to Armitrout. Dan Worth, the Hawkeye linebacker, 
made the stop. That's a good way to, to stop the crowd noise. Here we talked about the play action fake. They had to buy it because Emory's running so well. Ahmed tried made a poor decision here. He could have taken that ball and continued running forward for five yards. He turns and runs right into the Iowa linebacker, Dan Worth there. But had he kept going, that could have been a first down. A pickup of seven. It's second down and three at the 23-yard line. Tompkins is wide right. Wisconsin stays on the ground to Armantrop. And he may have picked up the first down. Depends on the marking of the ball, but it looks like it's going to be a first down for the Badgers, and we're inside 10 minutes now on the clock. No, they're marking it short. They're marking it short of the 20-yard line, which is going to bring up a third down and, and inches in this case. On the drop, 12 carries for 26 yards. Third down and one from the 20. Keppel checks in again in short yardage. Throw goes out. I will go with five-man defensive front. And Wisconsin has put it up. And the ball is thrown short, intended for Brad Kennedy. And on third and short, Wisconsin tries a little bit of uh, razzle-dazzle there. I question that call. But I'm sure really, I question the call, but I more importantly question key selection on receivers. Tomkin is streaking downfield on this play, and he's wide open. He overlooks him and throws to a receiver who's falling on the ground. You know, back-to-back uh, -back weeks here, we get into the fourth quarter, and these are crucial plays. One thing, though, I think Wisconsin decided that they were going to go for it on fourth down, and that is what they were going to do if they didn't go. They went for the seven on third. Now they still need one on fourth and one. Look for Keyes to take it himself. And he tries to. made out of got it. Keyes is pushed back, and I don't know if hell on fourth and one. But Keyes called his own number on fourth down, and it looks like Iowa has stopped Wisconsin. What a big defensive play. It's really going to depend on the markings here. This is going to be a, a big turnover. Yes, he's short. He's short. And Iowa holds on fourth and one. And now that third down play is going to loom so large. Iowa's football with 9-10 left. The Hawkeyes lead 10-6. We'll be back with the final nine minutes and 10 seconds on Sports Vision. First and 10 for the 20, it's Bayless. And he picks up two, maybe three yards out to the 23. This has been a game of defenses. Both defenses rising to the occasion here. That is a big play by the Hawkeye defense, stopping the Badgers in scoring position this late into the ball game. But it's going to be really uh, on the Iowa offense here to sustain the drive, eat up some of this clock, and, and quite possibly score because the Wisconsin Badger offense is running the ball pretty well. Both teams still with three timeouts left. Iowa leads Wisconsin 10-6. 8.30 left to play. Paholski still in at quarterback for the Hawks. And he'll roll right. Now across the middle, incomplete. Intended for Mark Mazzari at the 40-yard line. Mazzari overthrown. And that'll bring up third down and seven. Missouri was the checkoff receiver on this route. He initially att attempted to go to Morrow, who was running uh, a fake out and up pattern where he faked to attempt to go outside and then attempted to get deep. But the, the Badger secondary was all on top of him and nullified that. Missouri was the checkoff receiver in that case, and he was just out of position. This is a big third down play. Missouri checks out. Robert Smith is in along with Morrow. Smith is wide left at the bottom of your screen. Morrow wide right. Third and seven. And the Badgers are coming after Boholski. And he finds Morrow. And it is enough for the first down. The market at the 32. He was driven back to the 29. But enough for the first down and a big conversion on third down for Iowa. Mike Reed and Nate Odoms came up to drive Jim Morrow back with the market 
at the 32, first to 10 for Iowa. That's a very, very big play. Mr. Morrow is really turning into Mr. Clutch here because he caught that ball right in the crowd. Paholski wind up, who was going to him all the way, needed seven yards, and Morrow got that. This is a big first down for the Hawkeyes. Paholski checks off on first and 10. It'll look short and right, complete. Jim Morrow on the bounds at the 42. Iowa controlling the game and, more importantly, eating some time off that clock. Yeah, that's real important. They're eating the time off. Paholski just runs a short route pattern. Morrow catches the ball and gets two or three extra yards before getting out of bounds. This is what the Badgers have got to be careful of because as they nick away at you piece by piece by piece, what they're doing is setting up the play, and this is how Morrow has been able to get deep on so many teams is that they think he's just a short play receiver and he'll stand up and go by you. Second down and one, Marshall Cotton is in. And the give is to Richard Bass. And Bass picks up the first down. 7.35 left to play. Bass has been a workhorse this afternoon for Hayden Fry. Filling in once again for the injured David Hudson. Bass has done a good job and he runs on his knees as well as he does on the <laughs> standing up. He did a good job there keeping his balance and lunging forward for a couple extra yards for the first down. Well, he scored a touchdown on his knee last week against Michigan State. He was down at the two-yard line, and nobody saw it. First and 10 from the 45. The Hawks go with three wide receivers, but it is Bass on the ground, and he crosses midfield into Wisconsin territory. Bass with the pickup of six. Richard Bass, watch his running style there like a runner running out of the block. There he fine hit made by Reed, but Bass spun off the hit for an extra three or four yards. Bass having a heavy day, 13 rushes for 61 yards, but they've been all big carries on his part. Clock continues to tick. This is a big drive. 6.40 left to play. And a big hole for Bass ripped up from behind, or he may have gone all the way. Raddatz got a hold of Bass's leg as he was streaking by. As you pointed out, Raddatz, had he not snuck in here and just got an arm, there you see it's just an arm. Bass is off to the races with that ball there. Well, this drive started with just under 10 minutes left to play. It is now down to six and a half on the clock. So Iowa using some of that valuable time on the clock. First and 10 from the 41 and the draw play. Again, the call is to pass and he picks up four or five yards. Pete Nauka made the stop from the free safety slot. So we're beginning to see this Iowa offensive line taking over. They're plugging up some big holes and allowing the Iowa running backs time to run through them. I mean, when you get into the game this late into the fourth quarter, everybody's puffing, everybody's tired, but you can't negate the fact that the Iowa offensive line is a huge front line, and they work well together, and they're allowing these holes to open up. Second down and four. Rick Bayless finds some running room, and he picks up another first down for Iowa. So everyone's looking for number 323, Richard Bass, and the Hawks go to Bayless for the first down. Doing a good job. We talked about Bayless all season long, being able to just read the blocks and go where the open area is. But this off Iowa offensive line is really pushing the Badgers forward. They're not, their initial point of contact for the Badgers is two or three yards behind their line of scrimmage. And you're not going to win many duels that way. Richard Bass doing the bulk of the work in this drive. The Hawkeyes have worked the clock down to five minutes. Polsky checks off. And he'll go to the air. He's got Morrow. Jimmy Morrow out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Great call by Pomoska. This is one thing I like about the Iowa quarterbacks this year. They have no fear at all in changing the design play and going with one they feel more comfortable with. This was just a basic route. Morrow read the defense, knew that Odoms was giving Morrow way too much room and decided to go right to it. They picked up a nine-yard carry and sets up a second and one. 
Grant Goodman, number 30, checks in. Again, three backs in for the Hawks. And it is Bass breaking the line of scrimmage down to the 10-yard line. And another first down. Nate Odoms made the stop. On the replay, watch the movement on the Iowa offensive line. They're pushing, holding their blocks. Bass, you see there, his initial point of contact was number 36 above the Badgers. That's Browning. But that was five yards downfield. So the Iowa offensive line is showing why they consider themselves to be the top in the country. First and 10 from the 12. Marshall Cotton now is in the backfield. And it is Bass again. Down to the four-yard line. Johnson and Odoms trying to make the stop. And Bass powering his way down to the four. I can't credit these Iowa... Look at Bass, just following the blocks there, lowering the shoulder on the entire group. And look and at that hole, look at that hole he's got to run through. Oh, it's a great job on both parts. The linemen are doing their job, and these running backs are running harder than ever. The Hawkeyes need to score here. They can't allow a field goal. A field goal puts them in a situation where they could be tied. Second down and one. And it is Bass, bouncing outside, may not have gotten it. Bobby Taylor came up to meet him, the senior from Columbus, Georgia. And the clock now is just under four minutes to play. The clock continues to tick, and the Hawkeyes, this is going to be a crucial third down play. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown, and that's something to look at because that may allow them two additional downs, but they need to score here because, as we talked about before, it was a major upset for the Hawkeyes when they tied 10-10. And if they come away any, with anything less than a touchdown, they set themselves up in the same situation this year. Big defensive play for the Badgers. Third and one. Cotton checks in along with Cook. And it is Bayless over for the score. Rick Bayless goes over the top from three yards out and gives the Hawkeyes some breathing room. Big, big score by Bayless. Watch him take airborne here. Just giving it everything he's got. This is what the, the one thing the Hawkeyes love about Rick Bayless is he sells out on every play. He gave up his body there and knew he was going to get hit before, well before he hit the ground. He went airborne and came up with six points for the Hawkeyes. Rob Howland in for the point after. And it is good. So with 3.25 left in the ball game, Iowa bolts out to a 17-6 lead. We'll be back. <laughs> 67,000 plus has something to cheer about. The Hawkeyes, after struggling early, have pulled out to a 17-6 lead over Wisconsin. Just 3.25 left to play, and what an impressive ball control drive that was. It really was. And it did two major things. Number one, not only did it score, but it took an awful lot of time off the clock in only giving the, the, the Badgers less than three and a half minutes to come up with the play. What this does more than anything else is it takes the Badgers out of what could have been a long ball control drive on their part. They got to score and score quick because they have to score twice here in an effort to, to beat them now. George Murphy had been doing the kicking for the Hawkeyes. This time, Rob Howland will kick off. Perhaps Hayden Fry looking for a little more distance with this kick. Howland had been limited just a point after the field goal. Howland drives Wisconsin back to the one-yard line. Kistling takes it across the 15, tries to get outside, still on his feet, and he'll go down at the 24-yard line. That last scoring drive for Iowa, they ate up five minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. 14 plays. It started from the 20-yard line. Rick Bayless finally went over the top from three yards out. And now the Hawkeyes have a 17-6 lead over the Badgers. They're coming into this game, Wisconsin, as we told you, a 23-point underdog. They have played very well today, and now they need to get on the board quickly. He's still in the quarterback. And he will go to the air. He's looking for Tompkins. Complete. And the Hawkeyes will try to keep him from getting out of bounds. 
Hopkins with the reception at the 30-yard line. Ken Sims was there. And more importantly, the Hawkeyes keep the ball in play and the clock running. Tompkins made a poor decision on that play. The senior should have known better than to pull in. He, after catching the ball, turned inside as opposed to outside because he could have gotten out of bounds and thus saved some time on the clock here. Across the middle, the short one to Emery. To the 35, Joe Mott came up to make the stop. Larry Emery, the fourth all-time rusher in Badger history. Didn't play in the first half, but has been nursing a hamstring injury that he re-injured, was supposed to possibly play last week against Michigan, re-injured it in warm-ups. First down, though, it's first and 10 from the 35, 230 left to play. Keaton Smiley is now in the ball game. That was him on the coverage. The ball intended for Scott Fester, overthrown. Keaton Smiley knocked Lorenzo White out of this week's ball game against Michigan late in the ball game last week and hurt his arm doing it, seeing some action now for the Hawks. The Hawkeyes now knowing that they're going to have to throw the ball downfield, field, even though Keaton Smiley isn't at full strength. He's got a lot better game sense now than Anthony Wright. Anthony Wright uh, did a fine job while he was in there, but now they're attempting to go with a little more experience this late in the game. He's scrambling. They're looking for Tompkins. And Tompkins comes down with it. What an amazing catch. And he was going one-on-one -on -one with the man we were talking about, Keaton Smiley. Kyle Crow came over to help out. But that time, Smiley just got turned around. And it was Tompkins coming up with it. How Bud Keys gets this ball off is what I'm trying to figure out. He's rolling one way. He just turns and fires. And this ball just floats 30, 40 yards downfield. Tompkins has proven himself to be a quality receiver because he's catching some very difficult balls and coming back on that one on Keaton Smiley. The clock running, 2.05 left. Keys rolls right. He's going to have to get rid of it. And he just punches it out to Joe Armitrout. And Armitrout fights his way out of bounds at the 30. But Keys, excellent play just to get rid of that ball. He was in the grasp as he threw it. He really was. Joe Armantrout looks injured here, but he does a good job of watching downfield. The thing he's done is his half his receivers are caught off to him because the other side of the field he has a guy open. There you see the pressure by Pryor being applied, and he just flips this ball out to Armantrout, who does a good job of getting out of bounds. Tim Anderson had a hand on him as he let go of it, just a little flip. I remember a play like that last year, I believe, against the Michigan that went for a touchdown. Just a little flip outside. Got a timeout being called here. Don't know. Timeout taken by the Hawkeyes. 154 left in the game. Iowa leads 17 to 6 over the Badgers of Wisconsin. The best of the NBA and NHL play right here on Sports Vision. Catch Michael Jordan's fabulous act in nearly 40 exclusive games on Sports Vision. The Chicago Bulls have a new coach and a new attack to bounce back in the Midwest Division. Also, don't miss a face-off as the Chicago Blackhawks do battle in almost 40 live telecasts. The only station that you can see Blackhawk hockey is on Sports Vision. So catch a live wire with cable's hottest channel, Sports Vision. The Bulls and the Blackhawks, a winning combination on Sports Vision. The Iowa band starting to celebrate. It may be a little premature. Uh, yeah, because if they get out of this game, they got out of it with the skin off their teeth because this Badger team came in and has been playing very, very tough. And don't count them out yet. They're very known for their surprise finishes because the score here puts them only four, three points down. In this case, a scoring on a PAT. Wisconsin still with three timeouts left. 1.54 left. It is second down and 12. The ball at the 29-yard line. Keyes just gets rid of it in time, and it is picked off in the end zone. Keaton Smiley, the man who had gotten burned on the last play, comes up with the big interception in the end zone. We talked about why you insert a Keaton Smiley. And he, although injured, Keaton Smiley has a lot of experience, and he played this ball perfectly in coming back, snatching it right in front of Bill Williams and nullifying there 
what could have been the Badgers' attempt to try to get this game closer. That's the Iowa defense coming up again with the big play. We talked about last week it was Ken Sims nullifying the, the Michigan State effort. Here is the other corner, Keaton Smiley coming up with a great interception. 147 left. Iowa will just try to run out the clock. First and 10 after 20. Now the get is to the Bass, the first man through. Wisconsin with two timeouts left. This Badger team has played tough all game long. They've got to feel very, very happy with the, the performance that the defense has turned in because they played these Hawkeyes step for step. Second down and eight, the clock running, 110 left to play. The ball after 22. And Iowa will stay on the ground, understandably. Get Bayless straight up the middle, runs into Craig Raddatz. That'll bring up third down. And now Wisconsin will use one of their two timeouts. 57 seconds left. So turnovers have been a big key in this ball game. Bud Key's the quarterback through three interceptions today. Uh, his staff, 16 of 28. 224 yards, but the interceptions are what killed them. The interceptions have been all year long. That's been one of the keys to uh, the Hawkeye defense is their ability to bend but not break. Uh, as I see on the far sideline, Jeff Frost walking off the field and what attempts to be an immobilizer. We'll have to keep you updated on that. That could be a, a big turn of event for the Hawkeyes. They've got to have him next week against Michigan, but the, the Iowa defense has really turned in a, a stellar performance. They all year long have bent but not break. They came into this game as a, the number two defense in the country in scoring and allowing only nine points per game. And they'll, they don't stand to lose that in this game, allowing only six to a, a stingy Badger team. Third down and four. That pass picks up the first down, and that will put the lid on it. It appears with Wisconsin having just two timeouts, 52 seconds left. Richard Bass, what an afternoon he has had, filling in for David Hudson in his first start last week, was a big play man in the Michigan State game, and again today, Hayden Fry has gone to him when he's needed three or four tough yards. If you're going to give a game ball to anybody in this game, it's got to go to that Iowa offensive line, because all game long, they have a uh, just opened up hole after hole for the Iowa running back the line for holes keep time to get off the throws that that he's needed to make and really allowing the whole thing to happen for the Hawkeyes. Bass again stopped by Raddatz. And the clock continues to tick. 15 seconds left. And now the crowd here at Kinnick Stadium on their feet giving the Hawkeyes a standing O. Iowa will go to 5-0 and o, the Badgers. One and five next up for the Hawkeyes. Big, big matchup.